Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to Oldham County Fiscal Court. I'm Judge Executive David Vogel. Happy to have all of you uh, here today to uh, be with us on the seventh day of August. Uh, particularly like to welcome the young people who are here today that may not have ever been to a fiscal court meeting before. Uh, fiscal court is the uh, arm of the county government that provides uh, for the management of county services and the, uh, the execution of the tax dollars that are collected. So we're happy to have you uh, here today. Uh, you, um, the first thing we do is ask everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Magistrate Lankins? Here. Magistrate Tice? Here. Magistrate Leslie? Here. Magistrate Greenwell? Here. Magistrate Hounds? Here. Magistrate Eldridge? Here. Magistrate Dye? Here. Magistrate Logston? Here. Judge Vogel? Here. Having all members of the fiscal court present, this meeting is now in session. First of all, we'd like to ask you to accept the agenda. So moved. Second. Second. All right. Judge? Yes, sir. I'd like to make an amendment to the agenda. Out of the Utilities Committee, we would like to pull item two. All right, we'll remove that. And uh, Judge, yes, sir. I have a, a, an add to the agenda concerning a, an agreement with Orkin Pest Control at the Animal Control Building. All right, let's add that under contract agreements uh, under G. We'll say that uh, G subsection one. Are there any other proposed changes? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now we'll read the minutes from our last meeting, and our clerk, Sheila Fair, does that. July 17, 2018. The Oldham County Fiscal Court convened at a regular meeting at 2 p.m. with Judge Executive David Vogel, County Attorney John Carter, and the following magistrates in attendance. Brent Lankins, Wayne Tice, Bob Leslie, Steve Greenwell, Chris Hounds, Kevin Eldridge, Bob Dye, and Michael Logston. Motion made by Magistrate Dye and seconded by Magistrate Hounds to approve the agenda. Motion carried unanimously. Motion made by Magistrate Logston and seconded by Magistrate Greenwell to approve the meeting minutes of June 29th. Motion carried 702. Magistrates Hounds and Leslie abstained. Public comment. Deputy Clerk Bill Holscher presented information about the upcoming delinquent property tax sale July 26th at 9 a.m. in the fiscal courtroom. 2017 Sheriff's Property Tax Settlement. Lori Parson, Sheriff's Office Administrative Director, presented the property tax settlement for 2017 and responded to questions from the court. Motion made by Magistrate Logsdon and seconded by Magistrate Dye to authorize the Judge Executive to sign the Sheriff Property Tax Settlement Report for 2017. Motion carried unanimously. Ballersville Fire Protection District Budget and Tax Rate Presentation. Ballersville Fire Chief Stephen Fonte presented information relating to its ad valorem tax rate in fiscal year 19 budget and responded to questions from the court. South Oldham Fire Chief Edward Turner presented information relating to its ad valorem tax rate in fiscal year 19 budget and responded to questions from the court. County Administration, payables. Motion made by Magistrate Logsdon and seconded by Magistrate Hounds to approve the payables. Motion carried eight to one, Magistrate Greenwell voted no. Contract agreements and resolutions. Detention center prisoner housing contract agreements with Trimble and Henry County. Motion made by Magistrate Dye and seconded by Magistrate Hounds to authorize the Judge Executive to sign the Detention Center contract agreements with Trimble County and Henry County relating to prisoner housing for county inmates. Motion carried unanimously. QK4 Agreement, Phase 2 Engineering Kentucky 329 Bypass Project. Motion made by Magistrate Dye and seconded by Magistrate Logsdon to authorize the Judge Executive to sign the contract agreement with QK4 engineers relating to Phase 2 engineering work for the Kentucky 329 bypass project. Motion carried unanimously. Waste Hire Grant Final Report. Motion made by Magistrate Greenwell and seconded by Magistrate Hounds to authorize the Judge Executive to sign the Waste Hire Grant Report for 2017-18. Motion carried unanimously. Resolution for the LaGrange Parkway Maintenance. Ring Road. 
Motion made by Madrasa Leslie and seconded by Madrasa Eldridge to authorize the judge executive to sign resolution number 0107-1718 in contract agreement relating to maintenance responsibilities between KYTC and Oldham County for LaGrange Parkway. Motion carried eight to one. Madrasa Logsdon voted no. Settlers Point Trail Project Culvert Replacement Change Order. Motion made by Madras at Lincolns and seconded by Madras at Tice to authorize the judge executive to sign change order number one relating to the Settlers Point Trail Culvert Replacement Project. Motion carried unanimously. Courthouse Building Renovations Addition Memorandum of Understanding with the AOC. Motion made by Madras at Hounds and seconded by Madras at Logsdon to authorize the judge executive to sign the Memorandum of Understanding with Kentucky Administrative Offices of the Courts relating to building renovations and in addition to the Oldham County Courthouse. Motion carried unanimously. Committee reports and recommendations. Road Committee, Lake Point Guardrail. Motion made by Magistrate Hounds and seconded by Magistrate Greenwell to authorize the judge executive to sign the document to cost share 50-50, the guardrail replacement for Willow Bend Drive per Miles Fence Company quote of $7,062. Motion carried unanimously. Personnel actions, road department. Motion made by Magistrate Hounds and seconded by Magistrate Dye to hire Aaron Moore as equipment operator one at $13.50 an hour, effective July 18th. Motion carried unanimously. Public comment, none. Executive session. Motion made by Judge Vogel and seconded by Magistrate Hounds to enter into executive session pursuant to KRS 61.810F personnel for discussion which might lead to the appointment of employment of one or more employees. Motion carried unanimously. Motion made by Magistrate Hounds and seconded by Magistrate Tice to end the closed session and reconvene the regular meeting. Motion carried unanimously. Announcements. Magistrate Lincolns announced Oldham County Day Saturday, July 21st. Magistrate Leslie clarified the safety committee is not working on any proposed changes to the smoking ordinance at this time to allow exemptions for cigar bars or vapor stores. He appreciates and welcomes input from the public on any, su any subject matter within the county and the committee meetings are always open to the public. Magistrate Greenwell attended the fireworks at Wendell Moore Park, stated it was a spectacular show. Magistrate Eldridge, Magistrate Eldridge attended Project Guild's Oldham County Day luncheon and looks forward to the parade and other Oldham County Day festivities. Magistrate Dye attended the groundbreaking for the new Cattlemen's in LaGrange, which is expected to open February 2019. Judge Vogel provided an overview of some current and future economic development projects in Oldham County, including two hotels, road work in Crestwood, working with KYTC to select contractors for Interstate 71 off-ramps, four-lane road opening soon, Blakemore Lane to I-71, Louis Dampier Bridge, upcoming renovations in addition to the Oldham County Courthouse. Oldham County Day, Saturday, July 21st, parade at 10 a.m. with the Colonel William Oldham statue unveiling at approximately 1230. Motion made by Magistrate Dye and seconded by Magistrate Logston to adjourn the meeting. Motion carried unanimously. The meeting was adjourned at 4.43 p.m. You've heard the reading of our minutes from the last meeting. Is there a motion to accept? So moved. Second. Are there any corrections? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So moved. Motion carries. Uh, today, as I mentioned earlier, is August uh, 7th. Uh, some of you know, but many of you probably do not know, that uh, this is uh, Purple Heart Day. Uh, what is a Purple Heart? Uh, during the Revolutionary War, the military badge of merit was uh, given to uh, six uh, soldiers. And uh, later, uh, in uh, the year 1782, President George Washington uh, created uh, the uh, Purple Heart to be given to any soldier uh, killed in battle in any American uh, war or also uh, wounded in, in war. Uh, right now, this uh, bust is uh, it's, it's a little medal with George Washington on it with a coat of arms. And as I mentioned, it's presented to people who have either been wounded in action or died in action. Uh, Sheila mentioned uh, uh, William Oldham, the person our county is named after. He was uh, killed in a, a military action in 1791. Uh, didn't see in any of my research about uh, Colonel Oldham if he actually received this award or not, but he was certainly eligible to receive it or his uh, widow was at that point. So. Uh, there are some counties that are Purple Heart counties. Uh, Crestwood is a Purple Heart city, has a designation there. I hope someday that we'll have this designation for Oldham County. We have uh, a number of people in our community who have received the Purple Heart, and today uh, we salute them and 
thank them for the service they've extended to our country. Now I'd like to move on to the first item of uh, normal business here, and that is the uh, open comment section. If anyone uh, who's come here would like to make a public comment, uh, okay, you have a, okay, you're going two in a row here, aren't you? <laughs> okay, Becky's got an open, she's got a public comment she'd like to make, and then she will later do a couple of awards, so go ahead. Amy. That our magistrates are, are using would go in the uh, the blue banner uh, containers. This cup, however, has a mouth that's larger than the bottom. A large mouth cup or container, it would go in the other container the, with the red banner. So just a commercial announcement about our recycling center, and I hope people um, use it often. And if anybody has any questions, they can call 565-1007. Before you leave, thank you. I think we've had a number of compliments on the way this is set up, and uh, it looks good. Uh, people have asked me recently about why we're not accepting glass. Mm -hmm. Give that explanation. Certainly. Glass is considered a negative, uh, a, a negative return commodity. And the reason for that is, I mean, obviously because it breaks, so it has a certain amount of danger to it in handling it. Second, it's heavy. So it's very difficult to manage because of its rigid nature and that its weight. And even if we, we acquired, maybe through grant money, a, a glass pulverizer. Then we have tiny, tiny shards of glass, and we'd have to keep them in some sort of container or, or pit. I'm, I don't know. We don't have the means to contain uh, tiny glass substances. And the, uh, we also have no market for them. There's no place to send the glass. So we would have to use it in-house, and I don't have a means of using it in the county. So that's the reason we don't take glass. Right. Effectively, the only alternative is just to put it in the garbage and let it go to the landfill. Well, the, the thing about glass is that it, it comes from sand. It's an inert substance. It doesn't release any toxins into the environment. So if there's any one substance that's the least, that has the least impact on our environment, it's glass. So I have really don't have a big problem with putting glass back into the landfill. Other, there's lots of other items that have, plastic is one of them that I'd rather not put in the, in the landfill. So. Right, thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the fiscal court at this point? Thank you. Uh, my name is Mike Coatney. I'm residing in Goshen, outside of the city of Goshen in the county. Uh, I just want to take a quick minute and recognize uh, 
three individuals or groups of individuals who are under your purview who uh, I've seen their work lately and I'm just happy with it. And in this day and age, I don't think that gets noticed a lot in county in any kind of form of government where we seem to be complainers. Uh, I live in a neighborhood that's had drainage issues for 20 plus years um, and we'd given up hope that anything could happen, that anything was ever gonna come around to fix it. Uh, but the county has a stormwater management district that's existed for a couple of years. I wish I knew the head of its name. I saw him out in the hall. They're doing a fabulous job assisting us. Well, you Douglas trying, back there? Yeah, <laughs> trying to figure out the solution. Uh, the county engineer, Scott Harris, he's been very instrumental. Um, so much has happened since he's been here versus the last county engineer. You can't even imagine uh, the energy he's brought to it. Uh, the third person is Judge Vogel. Uh, you're a busy man, and I've seen you at those meetings, and you participated in those meetings. Uh, and I just wanted to thank you. you. You've actually acknowledged our project and the problem and, and uh, supported a solution for it. And just wanted to come and say that as a citizen of the county, I appreciate that, to see that, uh, that the, uh, the county government is, is working for the people. Thank you. Appreciate it. You've got a, problems going on for a long time, and we're doing our best to try to address it and solve it. So thank you. Hello, Judge. My name is Ralph Matheson. I'm the Goshen Hills HOA president. Uh, Mike just took everything away from me, but <laughs> what I want to do is I want to say thank you, Judge, for inviting me to a stormwater meeting over two years ago. I've attended every meeting since. Uh, I've been battling with stormwater issues in my subdivision for at least 15 years myself as president. Uh, Thanks to the Stormwater Board, thanks to you, Judge, and thank you to Engineer Scott Harris. In the 15 years, the last two years, because of the Stormwater Board and Scott Harris, nothing has ever gotten done until now. This project is moving along at a very good pace. We are very, very pleased with his work, Derek's work in the, in the engineer department. By attending these stormwater meetings, I'm just overwhelmed by how much is put on to this engineering department and how much they actually really do every day. But I just want to say thank you to the judge, thank you to the county, thank you to the stormwater board, and thanks to the engineering department. They're all, everybody's awesome. And I, we greatly appreciate it as residents. When we get your problem solved, we'll have a party. Okay, a big party <laughs> on me. Okay. Thank you, Judge. Thank, thank you, you everybody. Is there anyone else to address the fiscal court? Seeing no one, I'm going to close public comment now and go on to our uh, presentation of awards today for the anti-littering public service announcement contest. Uh, Becky Zockline is back and uh, happy to have this good news to present. Thank you, Judge. And uh, thank you once again, members of the fiscal court. I have with me today Todd Prayer oh, from uh, Republic Services. Um, it, Republic Services very generously donated $1,000 towards a prize for an anti-littering video campaign that we, um, um, cha we presented this challenge to our, our litter pickup groups um, at the beginning of this year, this calendar year. And um, we had a, um, a response. <laughs> it wasn't quite as overwhelming as we'd hoped, but two groups did provide videos um, uh, about anti-littering. So this is just the beginning. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll build from this. And, but we'd like to recognize these groups for their efforts and uh, present them uh, with an award today and, and they will be receiving payments of $500 a piece um, after this court session. All right, well let's uh, understand we have two groups here. That's uh, we have the uh, Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints Youth Group. Uh, would you all like to stand up and uh, and uh, what, uh, what I'd like you to do here is uh, just uh, come down and come forward and kind of walk slowly because uh, 
I think we can get a picture of you on our back camera here and would like you to be seen in the community. Are we able to do that? I don't operate the back. Oh, okay. Um, Amy, can you go shut that microphone off for a second? It'll automatically go to the back. Uh, oops. <laughs> Uh, I thought it would go to the back wall, does it? Uh, all right, how about turn it back and we'll take a picture there. One of the moms, okay, we'll get it. <laughs> there we go. All right, and uh, would, uh, how about everybody turn around and uh, come up here one at a time, introduce yourself, please. Start right in the middle there. How about you? Thanks. Yeah, how about you? Mm -hmm. Is the microphone on? Yeah. You have to speak up. Um, I'm Molly O'Brien. I'm Angela Helm. <clears throat> uh, Sam O'Brien. Uh, Ellie Gold. I'm Melissa Fisher. And I'm Gage Underwood. All right. Well, we, we thank you for being interested in the and picking up litter, and we wish people didn't litter, but uh, I know you won't because you know what it's like to pick it up, right? So, uh, all right, well, thank you very much. Congratulations. Hope you uh, can get something out of that $500 reward, award that you all would like to have for your group. Thank you. Okay. We also like to ask our second group, uh, Engineers of Tomorrow, to stand and come forward. All right. We have three in this group. All right. Congratulations. Somebody wants to get a, get a picture there. Okay, and uh, I'm going to have you turn around now and introduce yourself, but before you do that, I'd like uh, Mr. Schmidt, I saw your name on the back of your shirt, so yeah. we've got, got a head start there. Could you tell us, uh, Engineers of Tomorrow, uh, give us a little thumbnail uh, about your group. Uh, yeah, so we're a robotics team through first, um, the highest level, um, and each year we construct a robot weighing around 120 pounds. Uh, height varies greatly, uh, about yay tall, usually about yay wide and um, bring it around the country to compete. Great, kind of look like R2-D2 or something like that? Or? <laughs> yeah, a little bit more bare bones though, minus all the cool looking panels and the holograms. Okay, great, well, what's your first name? Uh, Peter. Peter Schmidt, all right, yes. thank you. Who else do you have with you there? Abigail Brodsky. Uh, Duncan Line. Okay. Well, thank you and congratulations very much. Engineers are critical to our economy and society and we wish you all the best of uh, everything in your careers. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Buddy. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Good job. I'm not exactly sure of the number of uh, roadside groups we have out picking up litter, but uh, 70 groups, and uh, they all have a chance to earn a little extra uh, revenue for their organizations and uh, help clean up the community at the same time. And, so we thank them all, and I uh, hope someday that all of us who are not picking it up will be big enough to eliminate the need to pick it up, but it'll probably be a while yet. So Let's uh, go on now to, uh, the, we have some uh, tax presentations today, and our first uh, presentation will be from the uh, uh, LaGrange Fire Protection District. Chief Sitzler here, and uh, Mr. Tice, and uh... Good afternoon, uh, Judge Vogel, magistrates. Uh, my name's J.D. Tice. I'm here uh, on behalf of the LaGrange Fire Protection District. I also have with me uh, Chief Jim Sitzler, and then uh, our chairwoman of our Board of Trustees, Amy Alvey, is also here, too. Um, we're here to just present some information on um, our budget and the tax rate we intend to levy for the 2018-2019 fiscal year. Uh, the tax rate we're going to be levying is the same that we've assessed uh, for the past nine or ten years. Uh, it's a dime tax, uh, ten cents per $100 of assessed value uh, on applicable property. 
Uh, from that, we anticipate raising revenue uh, $1,655,000 uh, or $1,655,540. Uh, from that, uh, our big biggest expenses will be our payroll, uh, which is obviously just covering the salaries uh, of the firefighters who work for us, uh, and then debt service, uh, both on the bonds uh, for the station one that we constructed and then on the equipment loans that we have as well. Uh, if you take a time to look at our budget as well, we also have uh, a particular interest, I'm sure, to the fiscal court, uh, a $200,000 appropriation from our capital outlay. Uh, that's to cover the costs of the loan for the, what are the 800? What's the radio frequency that they switched to? Uh, 800 megahertz right. that the county has switched to. It's the same uh, system that Jefferson County uh, has. Sure. And pursuant to the loan agreement we signed, uh, that money's been set aside through the past two budget cycles. Uh, we fully intend to write that check in November or December, whatever that money's due. Um, other than that, uh, just some information in terms of runs for the year 2017. Uh, we had 932 runs. Uh, in two out of the past three years, we've set record numbers uh, for the amount of runs that we make. Uh, just to give the fiscal court an idea of where we are now. Uh, through the end of June, we had 506 runs. Uh, in 2017, when we set our record through June, we had 478. Uh, so we're on pace at this point to go through 1,000 runs the first time ever. Uh, and assuming everything uh, holds serve, uh, this will be the third out of the past four years that we've exceeded um, our record number of runs for the year. Um, and then with that being said, if the board or if the court has any questions, we're um, happy to give any testimony at this time. Come on, Chris. I know you want to say something. <laughs> You're thinking, I'm just glad that you walked huh? up here on your own. I mean, that's what. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna be nice to you today, Jim. All right. If there's nothing further, then uh, that concludes our presentation. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Good job. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Our next uh, tax presentation is from the North Oldham Fire Protection District, Chairman Randy Shearer. I think you have that sheet in. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Randy Shearer, the chairman of the North Oldham Fire District. Um, I believe you've got this sheet in your packet, which is going to summarize what I have to, pretty much what I have to say, just in terms of district. Uh, we had about 516 runs last year. We've been holding at that, uh, roughly that level for some time. Uh, 49 members. We are uh, a majority uh, professional firefighters. Most of them, our firefighters come from Jefferson County, work in uh, Jefferson County, and then will um, uh, come out and work with us. The, the advantage of that is we have some very highly skilled uh, firefighters. So uh, we do have 49 uh, total members. Um, 45 out of those 49 are EMTs and we have four paramedics. So um, we do have a fairly uh, skilled uh, set of firefighters there. Uh, I've got some training hours. Uh, from an ISO standpoint, the last time we were reviewed was 2012. We are currently going through an ISO review. We are expecting some reductions there. Uh, but the one issue that we do have um, uh, for part of our district, uh, we don't have uh, water, fire hydrants um, in parts of our district out by Skylight and some of those areas, which limits our ability to reduce that ISO rating. Um, and uh, minutes in the budget are always um, on our website. Uh, just a couple highlights uh, on uh, last year. Um, we are continue to, continuing to refine and enhance our staffing plan. Uh, we did um, vote to go from four full-time, 365, 24-7 uh, firefighters up to five, and that we're also um, going to uh, staff Skylight, the Skylight Station. We have two stations, um, and that uh, we'll have three at our Goshen Station and two at Skylight. Uh, with those uh, now five um, full-time, 365, 24-7 uh, firefighters plus our uh, chief and assistant chief, I believe, and I'd have to check with South Odom, but I believe we have the most um, people 
on staff, ready to go of any district uh, in the county. Um, and uh, so we're pretty excited about that. We also have two other things that um, in case uh, we need that, obviously we have mutual aid as all the departments do, but we have a program we call our tactical uh, firefighter response program. That is almost like calling out volunteers uh, when we have a big situation. So for example, uh, recently a while back we had the Lions Club uh, that caught on fire, and uh, within a sh short matter of time, we had 20 firefighters on scene. So we feel very, very strong, very, uh, uh, very solid with our, with our staffing. Um, this year, we did also um, hire a consultant to evaluate um, our operations. Um, I've worked under three chiefs. Um, every chief has told me that we've been the best we've ever been. But as a board, we've always tried to figure out uh, the metrics to evaluate um, how well we really are. Or how, how do you evaluate a fire uh, department? You know, there's several things. We couldn't figure it out. Um, you know, we measure things like response time, time out. You know, we, uh, most of our trucks are out within two minutes of getting the call. That's the advantage of having people on staff as opposed to volunteers. We get them out in two minutes um, on the scene in less than eight in most cases. But those are the things we like to quantify and um, obviously constant uh, improvement in those areas. Uh, so we hired a consultant to help us with that and we're still working through some of those things. Other highlights, we did uh, give substantial raises to our uh, staff this year, uh, about a 5% raise uh, to the firefighters. Um, you know, we also feel very strongly, we've got uh, strong community outreach. Um, you know, a lot of people use our firehouse for nonprofits, um, use it, uh, open house. Um, you've, one, of, one of the, I think, the biggest signs is how we affect the community. Uh, as you may have heard, there's a fair amount of controversy going on right now. But if you look at our elections uh, for a firefighter rep, uh, we had 150 people vote for that rep this time. I think uh, most, um, I think the other elections that were held that uh, that day, I think they might have had 10, I think might have been the max that some other district had. Obviously, we've reached hard to go into the community uh, and uh, publicize these elections and get community involvement. We're, we're very proud of that. Uh, trustees also are very proud of, uh, we have a scholarship fund that we donate to and we're able to give away $4,000 uh, in scholarships to promote firefighting and um, scholarships to uh, two of our uh, firefighting um, sons and daughters of uh, two of our firefighters. So, um, pretty proud of that. Our tax rate uh, is nine cents. Um, there was, uh, if you follow the Odom error, there was, uh, we initially raised it to 10 cents, but then went back and did some recalculations and determined that we could keep it at nine cents and fund everything that uh, we wanted to fund and still um, we're on track in seven years to have a uh, two million dollar capital reserve and still pay down debt. So financially we feel we are extremely uh, strong department uh, in terms of where we are financially and didn't see the need uh, to raise the tax rate. Um, what we've got going uh, for 2018 upcoming, um, we did, um, Chief Tim Conway has been with us for four years, uh, excellent chief, he did a great job, uh, but he has decided to resign. Uh, so we are currently looking for a new chief. We've had a posting out for about a week. So far, I've had 25 uh, resumes submitted. So we think we're you know, not going to have too tough a time filling, filling that position and look forward to moving forward. You know, once again, Tim did a great job, um, but has decided to move on. Uh, other key things we're doing is uh, we're replacing qui equipment uh, that is not as suited for our department, um, all the equipment we, we buy, we go through a firefighter committee to determine what to buy. But over the years, things have changed a little bit. So two items of equipment that we will be selling and replacing with more suitable equipment. We have what's called a quad, which is a fairly big truck. Uh, in our district, we have some fairly small roads and that um, we have difficulty getting that uh, truck down some of those roads. So we will replace that with a smaller truck and then also uh, we have a boat. Um, uh, we will replace that with a smaller 
easier to use boat. Uh, most of our fire rescues that we do on water are probably more associated with flooding, like what we saw this year in February, than they are with, let's say, burning boats out in the, out in the river. So we will be uh, in the process of selling that one piece of equipment and replacing it with more like a Zodiac type boat, which is more appropriate for the uh, district. Um, and finally, um, just want to report that uh, the bad side of this is when, um, uh, when we scrubbed the numbers um, to look at our tax rate, uh, it forced me to go through all the audits for the last 10 years, and lo and behold, I saw a mistake in last year's uh, financial audit uh, by our accountant that we will be republishing an audit. He understated our debt uh, by about 200,000. Uh, 200, he had everything else right, including amortization tables. They just didn't add up. So we will be republishing that. Not a substantial change. We are still in an extremely solid financial uh, position there. Um, just in terms of the budget and, um, and debt levels, you can see where I put in a penciled number, taking one off the audit. We're still trying to get rid of it and replace it with the right numbers. But uh, we're about $1.6 million in revenue next year. Um, and you can see the vast majority of that is in the personnel expense. And you can see a significant uh, increase there in that personnel expense, uh, reflecting some of the things that I talked about. Uh, where we are in our budget this year, if you include overall, all our capital, about uh, 170000 of capital, we will have a negative cash position, so we will dip into our capital reserves this year. But once again, we felt that was appropriate. If we look at that, this will be the, f the only time in the next seven years that we'll dip into those capital reserves. And you can see our, you know, our cash position, we ended the year about $1.3 in cash. So, you know, if we would have gone, if we would have raised the uh, tax rate to the 10 cents, we probably would have had about a $5 million capital reserve surplus cash position out in about seven years. We'd, go, we'd take a look at seven-year forecasts uh, when we do our budgeting. Um, we feel that the uh, two million number is more than adequate uh, with the capital that we need. So that's why we ended up uh, keeping it at the nine cents rate. So uh, that's all I have, unless you have any questions. All right, uh, Randy, very comprehensive report. Appreciate that. Uh, Magistrate Hounds. Yeah. I don't know that you want to continue to use the word professional firefighter. You can call them career, but we're all professional firefighters no matter who they are. Okay. Um, there are people that take exception to that. Okay. You don't have the largest number of people to respond to a run during the day because South Oldham has four on the engine, Chief Eddie Turner, Matt Nelson, and David Thompson. All right. So they have, they have what, eight and we have seven, right? Yes. So, so, so. just to, I guess um, I'll preface it that I've been in the fire service for several years. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't understand the staffing that you're talking about. If you have the capital, why wouldn't you put the money in your biggest asset, which is your people, and go ahead and have three folks, which is the minimum staffing required by ISO for a company, at both the Goshen Station and the Skylight Station? So that's a, a, a fundamental question that the board debated long and hard about, and that there's two schools of thought here. And obviously, yourself coming from the firefighter world that we typically get this from the firefighter and if you look at our board our board votes they came along the side of firefighters versus non-firefighters in terms of this and that there's one school of thought that says raise your tax rate to 10 cents and use as much as you can to fund staffing we feel the, the majority of the board feels that what we need to do is base it not on tax rates what you tax so if I could tax at the 11, 12 cent rate, would I tax at the 11, 12 cent rate? No. I would adjust my staffing based on the service levels we need. So that was why we went from, we have gone from three to four to five firefighters in the last two years. Feel like we're making great steps there. So we're not, our philosophy is not to. But the people that live in the Skylight area deserve the same level of fire protection as my brother does that lives in Longwood, which is okay. around the corner from the station. So, so there's been a lot of debate, and we can continue it here or do no, it some other time. But we had, one of the big questions was, do you keep four people staffed at Goshen to take care of, um, uh, do you take four people at Goshen, or do you do a three and two? Um, 
only 11% of our runs, which we still want to make sure we have quality service out, out in the uh, skylight area, 11% of our runs are out in that general direction, uh, or where it's closer to skylight than it is from Goshen. So we decided we're going to build it up slowly. We looked at the, um, looked at the process, and that what we like about the three and the two is the two can get there very quickly. And the three are going to be there just a few minutes behind there. There's a roughly five, six minute difference to get between the two of when they'll respond. So on the 11% of the runs that they can get there, uh, will, you know, what, in 11% of the runs, what you'll do is you get two people there first. There are several things that they can do before entering the house. And also, we will have the, um, depending on when, what time of day it is too, you know, other people, chief and others, potentially where they live, arriving as well. So that was what the, the thought was, is to build it up, test it out, see how it goes. And that the, um, the go with the, get the two there first, and then the three will be there shortly behind it. So, so, that, so that, was, that was the Fundamental great difference of opinion. Right. And I, I would, my question to you is, what did the consultant say that you should put at that station? Uh, he said we should staff it. I'd have to go back and look at that. Um, would have to because uh, we no, we no. had to re we there were great debates on this. Uh, no, I will I, say I, I, yeah, I, I, I know yeah. there are. I know there are. But the consultant that the fiscal court used, as well as you've used yep. the same mm -hmm. gentleman, gave a recommendation to fiscal court as to what for what fiscal court should do with the fire districts. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm I don't have a copy of the of the um, documentation. Uh, but I, I believe that he said that you should staff it with three people. I believe what he said is he, he said that you should, uh, well, we'll have to go back and take a look at it. And for anyone that's interested, the report is on our website and available to anyone that would like to, like to see it. Um, I'm not sure that is exactly what he said, but we can, you know, we can take a look at it. I understand. Good. Um, again, being in the fire service for as long as I have, your biggest asset are your folks. No, no question. And um, taking care of them is, is fundamental to making the service work. No question. And I'll just, you know, I, I don't want to get in a debate about it, but I still say that the people that live, if you, and you have, the, you have the funding to do it, the people that live in Skylight deserve the same level of fire protection as the people that live in Goshen. No, nope. we, uh, we, we believe we have taken care of, so we would have a fundamental disagreement on how to implement that. I guess would be the would be the question. So, Brad should die. Yeah, these farmers, um, farm fighters, I guess is the word you use. Um, that's what I grew up with, farming. Okay. But uh, uh, they've evolved. Yeah, we'll cover all of them. Uh, are these um, like the city of Louisville? Uh, their farm fires is 24 on, 48 off. Uh, yes, that, many of them are. Um, not all, but yes, many of them are. So. And you mentioned the ones that came over from Louisville to work for you. Are those Louisville firefighters working on their off days? or a combination of some are Louisville fighters, firefighters working on their off days. So they would work uh, one every six days for us. Uh, then we have some that are retired from various, uh, various uh, uh, Jefferson County, Louisville, various places along those other, lines. Other other districts put it that way. Yeah. I know you don't use the word volunteer anymore. You, I, I've got to forget all these words I used to know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. Magistrate Likens. Thank you, Judge. Uh, I want to applaud Randy Shearer for the direction that he's taken the fire department. I think, and basically in government today, I see them taxing at the maximum rate and figuring out a way to spend it. And he's simply there taking the instead of the what if scenario they're taking the reasonable scenario they've lowered their tax rate it's it's i don't i don't think any of the other fire districts have lowered their tax rate but i think they're doing a an admirable job and they're really fiscally responsible 
with the public's money. So I want to applaud you for the job you've done. Thank you. Thank you. We try. And, uh, um, and what is your ISO rate now? That's so we are right now, the last time we were, we were rated was in uh, 2012. And so that was a 4 and an 8B. We anticipate that. We expect that to go down to a 3 and an 8B. Uh, the 8B, we, uh, due to the some of the areas, we just can't get the water there. We don't have hydrants and things along those lines. But uh, When I moved to Goshen 10 years ago, or 50 years ago, <laughs> I'm older than I'm saying, our ISO rate was 10. Okay. So. so I think it's going in the right direction. Thank you. Right. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate thank, it. Thank you. Uh -huh. Appreciate your presentation. The uh, next uh, taxing district we're going to hear from is the Pee Wee Valley Fire Protection District. Uh, Chief Bob Hamilton is here along with uh, Chairman Joe Burkhardt. Hey, Judge. Afternoon. Oh. Tax rate for the uh, District for real personal property, motor vehicles, watercraft will remain at 10 cents for each $100,000 of value. The financial side, we're a much smaller unit than you've heard from the last two pres presentations, where total revenue is anticipated to be 532000 394 this year. Uh, we're going to dip into our reserves at the tune of 338,168 and we're going to be securing a um, loan for a new engine that is coming on stream this fall for 250. So our total available is 1,125,62. Appropriations personnel, 61,000. Operations, which includes our responsibility to the court for the radios, 489,543. Admin reserves, 20,019. And the capital op outlay is 550,000, which includes the new engine. So that balances out at the 1,120 figure. Our budgeted contribution to reserves this past year was anticipated to be 62,690. We actually were able to contribute 119,584. Cash on hand or reserves at the end of June, end of the fiscal year was 753,209 and our anticipation for next year will be 410. Um, considering, and, and principally that comes down because of the radios and the new engine. Additional information of note, uh, we're proud of our audit. Our audit has come in with no reportable identified internal control related findings, no material weaknesses nor significant deficiencies the second year in a row for such a, a findings and we're pleased with that. We've uh, taken some action to ensure that our financial controls are, uh, have been uh, reviewed and adjusted and, and we think we're on top of the entire bundle and so do our auditors. Debt, uh, currently we have the 175 that we owe fiscal court, but we'll pay that on time in November. There's no interest, appreciate that. Uh, and then station two, uh, we have a 10-year uh, debt started in 2014. Uh, there's about 875,000 in balance. We have a interest rate slightly under 4% on that. Um, ISO ratings were at three in Oldham County and a three plus in Shelby County. Uh, our revenue is about two thirds Oldham County, one third Shel Shelby County. The one last thing, I can't 
stand here without mentioning Ash Avenue. I do it every year. Uh, it continues to give us a little grief, um, although the county and others have been working on it to the extent that Ash Avenue is now closed <laughs> for a couple of months while they put in um, some, uh, some work up at Ashbrook and something of this nature. Um, but they have been doing work down at our main area of concern when we have heavy rains. And we've also moved into uh, obtaining some water rescue equipment through some grants and some uh, movement of monies and training our personnel. So, and we've had several incidents over the past year and that we can speak to if you're interested. That's some of our financial side. And any questions? Well, uh, I, I would be on water rescue. I mean, I. We swim a lot. Are uh, you talking about the Ash Avenue? <laughs> we There's don't two have locations. a river there, but yeah, we've they're got. They're fixing the one in Ashbrook, uh -huh. but down at the county line, yeah. the old Red Penn landfill, that's uh -huh. going to be a problem yeah. for a while. All so. right. Okay. We've had to. Uh, there were an incident with a, uh, a lady from Persimmon Ridge got caught in there, and then there was another one more recently that we've had to um, go in there, and we're a little nervous about um, doing that with our engines and our on foot, so we're trying to move into something a little bit more appropriate. Actually, Leslie. Yes, what's the name of the manufacturer of your engine? It's uh, Smeal Corporation. Out of West Virginia? South Dealer? Dakota. No, I think, well, we went to South Dakota, but I think they've also got a plant in Michigan. Thanks. Anyone else have any questions? Um, the, uh, you did say so you had money in reserve, correct? Excuse me? You, you, you do reserve. have money in reserve? Yes, we, we have 750,000 currently, and we, I think we'll be around 400 a year from now. Well, the only reason I ask that, is I, I see it, it said the interest earned, you get zero here. I mean, you are getting something for that money, aren't you? Uh, that, um, prior to the infamous year of 2008, we were earning probably 50,000 a year on our monies. And then we got nervous, as everybody else did, and moved it into out of our investment plans because of what was going on with the economy. Recently, over the past six months, we're ready to move back into what we think might be a little bit more stability out there and generate some monies from it. We have it in the money markets, and it's a very modest. We think we can do a little bit better on that municipals and what have you. Well, um, I'm happy to uh, provide, uh, if you so desire, for any, any public agency in our county. Our chief financial officer and our county treasurer are both familiar with uh, many, uh, you know, in investment options that are safe and uh, approved by four state and public funds. and. Uh, can uh, you know help you uh, squeeze out a little more if if it's uh, appropriate same in addition to getting more sometimes uh, if you're doing any refinancing uh, they might be able to offer uh, some insight if it's not if you don't have it already about how to get a lower uh, bond rating too as well so we'll tap any resource we can uh, get Right, and they're doing that, they do that for us, and we're certainly willing to share any information that we have that can help any, any public agency in our community. Sure enough. Okay. Judge, I had one other okay, question. Sure. How, how far is South Oldham from Pee Wee Valley's fire department? From their <coughs> station to ours? Yes, sir. Three or four miles. Three or four miles. Mm -hmm. I think that's a topic that we ought to bring back up for a discussion. We had that study done seven or eight years ago about merging some of the fire departments in the county. Well, right. It, it, uh, you know, it the, it's something for the boards to talk about, the fire boards, and uh, see, see where they can work together and share resources. They're all great on mutual aid. They'll all 
anytime there's any incident, everybody turns out who's asked to, and uh, they do do so quickly. So, um, uh, all right. Appreciate you guys being here today. Thanks a lot for your service. Mike, did you have a question? Thanks, Joe, and thanks, Chief, for what work you all do. But is there some state uh, regulation that you have to put so much money in cash and so much money in investments? Or is it, does it not matter? Are you all not regulated that way? No. Okay. I, just a question. You all were talking about finances earlier, so. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. Next item on the agenda is the Library Taxing District budget and presentation. Hello, my name is Mary Melchark. I'm the interim director of the Oldham County Public Library and with me here is David Hutchinson. He's our board treasurer. The Oldham County Public Library Board met on Thursday, July 12th and voted unanimously to adopt the compensating rate provided by the Kentucky Department of Revenue. The Oldham County Property Tax Assessment was certified by the Kentucky Revenue Cabinet on July 11th and received by the library on July 16th. The compensating rate for real property for fiscal year 18-19 is 4.1 cents and has anticipated revenue of $2,518,498. The fiscal year 17-18 tax, tax rate for real property was also 4.1 cents, <clears throat> excuse me, and produced revenue of $2,399,348. The compensating rate presented for personal property for 1819 is 9.47 cents with an anticipated revenue of $215,583. Last year's personal property rate was 8.66 cents and produced a revenue of $215,222. The motor vehicle tax rate remains at two cents. Some statistics about our library. Last year we had 234, 133 visitors visit the library. We had 26,293 citizens of Oldham County with a library card, which is about 40% of the population. In the last fiscal year, the libraries had a total circulation of 423,277,000 ,200 items, including digital checkouts of ebooks and e audiobooks. And this year, we are adding movies, music, and magazines to our digital offerings. The library presented 991 free educational and literacy programs last year, attended by 55,000 patrons from toddlers to adults. Public computers continue to be heavily utilized with over 20,000 computer sessions this past fiscal year, and we also had 34,000 reference questions throughout the year. Looking forward, we have a new media lab that will provide patrons with equipment, tools, and a space to design and create new projects and learn new technology, such as Microsoft and Mac software and pre-coding concepts. The skills learned in the lab also have workforce development implications. Patrons can schedule free one-on-one -on -one sessions, group programs, and computer <coughs> classes. These will be free as well, and part of the funding for the lab came from a $5,000 <coughs> Dow Corning Foundation grant. The library and the Oldham County Health Department this coming year are partnering with NASA's Universe of Learning in a StarNet program with Caltech IPAC, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, the Space Center, Space Science Institute, the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory, and Sonoma State University. They, we are participating in the inaugural tour of the interactive traveling exhibition, Discover Exoplanets, the Search for Alien Earths. The learning goals for the program are to understand how our solar system is alike and different from other solar systems, how NASA is searching for habitable worlds and the tools scientists use to do this, to enhance our understanding of Earth's place in space and learning the types of telescopes and tools that are used to answer questions about our solar system. The library will host the exhibit in January of 2020. Our exhibit coordinator, Susan Bunting, is traveling to Pueblo, Colorado later this month for training. Part of the training includes astro materials handling so we can have those materials in the library and that would be things like space rocks and things like that. So we're pretty excited about that. 
that is all I had. David, do you have anything here? I'd just like to add that uh, if any of you ever have the time and stop over, particularly in the summer and the early hours, and see the effectiveness of our children's programs, you would be amazed at the enthusiasm. Our internal surveys that we have taken show us to be well received by the citizens of Olden County, and we as a board take our responsibility very seriously in trying to provide as much bang for the buck as we can, and we think we are doing so. Thank you. Okay, well, uh, just. We have some questions here. Magistrate Logston. What, what is the uh, percentage of handheld books versus everything going electronic? Are you all still buying books that people can hold and feel and oh, touch? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, let me see. Now, now, are you all shifting towards more uh, um, computer-based products? For the, yeah, for the digital things we are part of a consortium which is called libraries unbound kentucky libraries unbound because it's a consortium and we all contribute to it every year and most of the counties in um, the state are part of it there's thousands and thousands and thousands of items in there and that grows every year um, so that's not things that we personally have purchased just the library it's a consortium um, i can give you those numbers Okay, the total books that we have are 278, oh, that's circulation, sorry. We have um, 119,908 physical items. We have in downloadable audio, we have 28,250 items. In downloadable video, we have 1,874 items. And I'm sorry, downloadable books, we have 141,052 items. So we, it looks like we have more electronic items, but, but. We continue to buy books yeah, we're on still, a yes. regular basis and have not really made any significant changes in our dollars allocated to that. Have we, Mary? No, we have not. And. I think because the digital items are purchased by so many uh, people or so many libraries, and because you don't have to have space for them, it's understandable that we have more digital. When it comes items. to specialty, digital becomes obviously a very easy way for us to reach something that right. may be of interest only to a small percentage of right. the population in our county. And cost effectiveness. Uh, definitely gives an edge to the digital and by going to the consortia we achieve the, again the best bang for the buck in getting it but there are still plenty of people like myself that like to have a Daniel Silva in hand to take a leisurely look at and perhaps even nap occasionally with but uh, uh, the presence of hard copy books is still a major part of our purchasing Absolutely. program each year. Magistrate Hounds. I will echo your comments that you made about the summer reading program. My daughter participated <clears throat> in that this year, and although she, we don't need any more of the little toys that you had in the treasure chest, uh, she came home and was uh, thoroughly enjoying the program, and, and I do think it means a lot to keep the students, the Children reading and we work the closely summer. with the Board of Education on our summer reading program, even rewarding people with the pool party, so on, at the end of the season. And, uh, uh, you know, all of us know our future is the children, and that is probably the major focus of our efforts, I think. Major Dye. Um. I want to echo what Chris said. I don't have children, but uh, I remember doing that when I was younger, if that's believable. I do remember that far back. 
uh, I, one thing that did, did pique my interest, I'm, this is a selfish question, when you say a downloadable thing, mm -hmm. is that on-site downloadable or, or can, you don't, uh, can you download site to site? In other words, can I download something from your place on my computer at home? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you can be and at on home. Devices, phones, everything. That's, okay, last time I was in, in not your office, I have an A library, and they said, well, and, and it's how long ago it's been, so I'm embarrassing myself, but with a disc, they said, well, you can't use your disc, but we'll sell you one, and I'm sure that was because they want to contaminate the their yes, system. Right, we don't use discs anymore. Yeah, well, I mean, that's how long ago it's been. <laughs> yeah. We got a really exciting program coming up. Um, trying to think of the hip, the new one that just will be going online for, oh, the, um, through the Toledo vendor. Oh, oh, um, trying to Hulu. Think of it. Is it Hulu? Hulu. I think, no, it may not no. be Hulu. It's, uh, Something I forget like the name of it, but we have, um, we're, we've got a brand new vendor, and it's going to have uh, music and um, hoopla. hoopla. Hoopla, yes. Hoopla. Music and videos, um, and also RB Digital, a whole new vendor for the digital books. So not only will we have them from, from Kentucky Library Unbound, we'll also have them through RB Digital. And an enormous library. And Content magazines. is just enormous in that yeah. program. And I think that's going to be on pretty much at the end of the month here, isn't I it? I think so. Yeah. So, in other words, young people won't have to uh, download off the uh, off the internet and try to get away with getting something for free and get it free from you. Right. Yes. There you go. Exactly. What a deal. <laughs> Magistrate like uh, Leslie. Yeah. Would you have any copies of the Dead Sea Scrolls that could help Magistrate Dye? <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> might be able to get a copy of that. Okay. Thank you. Um, I bet we can. It appears to me that you uh, have uh, 2.2 million in reserve. Yes. Is that right? Yes. But yet, uh, it says here that you generated $8,000 interest. Yes. Uh, oh. That's actually, I don't know why that's so low, because I can tell you that we are getting over $2,000 a month. And I highly recommend PNC's program for any uh, uh, of the tax districts too, which is fully secured, and uh, at present we are earning over two thousand dollars a month. On Did just start, or you know, actually I it's mean, been uh, some time. I I don't know. Um, like I. I, I did not do the budget because I'm just the interim director. Our previous director did the budget, so I unfortunately I can't answer a lot of questions about that. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Obviously, on 2.2 million, uh, one yeah. percent would be uh, twenty-two thousand dollars. Yeah, no, we're so we're well above. We're the getting less yeah. than a half a percent based on what this audit, this report is. I don't know why she would have budgeted so low because I can tell you we are effectively been running twenty-five hundred, twenty-four hundred dollars a month. Fortunately, the interest rates have started to respond, and we do have right. reserves well, to meet our six yeah. months requirements. I mean, at this point, your reserve is almost equal to a year's operating expense. Uh, yes. I know that you're trying to save money for or a new yes. library. Okay. Yeah, we We've need been them working desperate. on this and working on it. And <laughs> I do think that we're closer to yes. getting getting property for we you. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but you might, you know, if you're getting a couple thousand a month, uh, that's a lot better than what this reflects. It, we definitely are. No question about oh, it. Okay. Okay, great. Anybody else have anything? All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> and we do invite you to stop over sometime. <laughs> hey, thank you. The uh, next item here is the extension district budget and tax rate presentation. We welcome Ken Hepperman. Good afternoon. Thank you for letting me have this opportunity to uh, present some numbers and talk over a few things. Uh, let me, let's just jump right into this, this tax rate thing. The extension board set this year's tax rate at the compensating rate, which is defined by statute KRS 132.0.006 as the rate that will produce an amount of revenue approximately equal to that produced last year, but not less than revenue produced or received this year. Okay, 
So last year was 1.5%. Generated some 900 and was our figures that we were going to use is 927,000 is what it came to. Um, so what we found out from DLG was that we needed to produce a compensating rate. From what I understand, the compensating rate is because our assessment value of our property went up, we did not want to increase the dollar amount of revenue from what we showed last year, and so there had to be adjustment in the rate. DLG knew this, they had a formula for it, they said, they passed it on to UK, UK passed it on to us, and we submitted it. I think it's, um, as you see in one of your reports, it was 1.458 cents and 1.5938 cents. So, yesterday afternoon, I have contact with Stan. He said, you know, I don't think this rate is right or the formula is right. I never really did agree with it. Okay, so he made contact with DLG, and correct me if I'm wrong, Stan, or jump in whenever you want. Um, I think they've got it worked out as far as what the rate can be or the formula can be to keep our dollar number the same. So that being said, whatever rate that they agree on, whether it's 1.45 or 1.5, cents per one hour valuation, that's what we'll use. And it's basically just on the personal property item. You know, I think Stan said, he told me this morning that between the two formulas, or the two recognizing of what they should be, there's a $3,000 difference. So whichever it comes to, we will use, we will adjust it. And if it means we drop the whole thing back to 1.45 cents, We'll do that. Right. Okay. Okay. I mean. All right. If uh, there isn't any other questions or comments, here's the budget. If you got that sheet in front of you, the first column is our budget from last year. As you see, fiscal court produced revenue to us of two hundred ninety-eight thousand. Those are the expenses all the way down that we use, we paid to get 298,000. The next column over is our actual money that we spent for 2017, 2018. We took in 890,000 in tax revenue. Here again, just for the sake of, of showing revenue, we plugged in fiscal courts 298,000 which at the bottom down here, you'll see where we repaid that back in June to fiscal court, 298000 So the difference is what, our, what we actually paid out in expenses for that for last year, which amounted to, I think, right at $412,000. If you look at the third column, Here's the difference between what we actually spent and what our budget numbers were. And I'm not gonna go through each and every one, I'll let you see, but the majority of the items in there, we were under budget on that we spent. And to kind of answer the question that's in everybody's mind right now, where's our legal expense? It's under the line item board expense. And as you can see, that's you know, we had an inc increase of what we anticipated from the very beginning of the year. So plugged in, if we said our, in, in, our revenue was 1.1 million and our expenses were 7.8, we had a net of 479,000. Fourth column, our budget for 2018-2019. Right or wrong, I used the same figure as far as income, 890000 As you go down, you'll see, I'm not going to go through each and every expense, but the column on the far right is the difference between the two budgets. For example, support staff, 
we're increasing by $4,772. Looking through there all the way down to the bottom, our increased budget for this year over next, last year was 80, is $89,000. Three items make up that major difference. Um, as you see, the board expense, 49000 Well, you know what that is. Treasurer's bond, because of the money that we are getting in, we have to increase our bond amount. Also, because of the money in the, that we're getting in, our audit has to change. And we checked with several different CPAs that do the type of audit that would look after our extension and the best we could find was a ten thousand dollar figure so at the end of august of this year we're having an auditor come in and do a complete audit simply because that's what that's what is required so our two between our two budgets eighty nine thousand dollars we really hasn't haven't jumped in and spent a lot of additional outside money now you're asking where is the money going that we have collected and, and plan to collect. It's all going into our reserve site earmarked for a land site and building, whether it's going to be built or we can purchase one, but that's what it's earmarked for. The only money we intend to spend is what you'll see in the budget for that fourth column hopefully and everything else is going into our site selection and increased in expansion um went through it kind of quickly but it gladly answer questions if i can you intend to maintain that uh, posture until the uh, legal issues surrounding the stacks are clear yes absolutely Anybody like to ask any questions here about Ken, of Ken? Um, I'll follow the same line I had in the last two, and that is that you've got, looks like, uh, you know, 600 and almost 700,000 in reserve here. Uh, where, you know, what, where is the money? Are you getting what type of return on it? Are you getting something? We have four different bank accounts, and they're all with Stockyards Bank. And they're all in the basically CD money market type thing that would, you know, we're unfortunately we're generating a very small amount to where it is right now. Once we get up, if we can get up a little higher than that and can do something different, such as what you suggested, try to invest in um, a better plan, we'd be glad to do that. But we're trying to keep very physically, fiscal responsible. Keep it in a very safe place. Right. Well, uh, you know, there's a schedule of investments that are eligible and ineligible for agencies, public agencies, and of course, we've never get into anything that's uh, considered risky. But there are some that you might be able to squeeze out a little bit more from once you hit a certain point. I think so. And some of that depends on, in the near future, what we our site committee might find as far as property that we can purchase or get into that so you know it might be a year it might be three years before we're we're going to be in a position where we're going to be able to um, have a building one that we want and need okay well thank you can, can i can yes, i shoot sir. my horn a little bit sure can some of the highlights i think sheila put in her request her email that we could say some things that's coming up and what we've kind of done Quickly, uh, extension had over past year 96,000 contacts with residents of Oldham County through emails, office visits, program supports, classes, and such. This past June, 4-H sent a record number of kids to camp, 319. This is the first year in history that one county has had the entire camp to themselves. Oldham County is the only county in Kentucky 
that had this many kids go to camp at one time. So they're doing a tremendous job. 10 4-H'ers earned state achievement awards, three gold, three silver, th for four bronze. 4-H Dog Club won the state bowl competition. 4-H Horse Club won state hippology contest and state horse bowl. 4-H shooting sports members earned 54 trophies this past year. Four top discipline scores, three top scores at state competition. They have some over 80 children that are in shooting sports right now. They have a waiting list for kids that want to get in. We have, we have children from Jefferson County that want to come in and get some of our programs. We can't do that. We have to take care of all of Oldham County first. The drug court of Oldham County came to us and asked us if we would put on a program for people that have gone through the drug court as far as health issues and cooking classes to benefit them. We, per, we did that. I think that Chris had 25 participants that went through it. Partnered with Apple Patch and Cedar Lake Lodge as far as cooking and nutrition. And partnered with Rotor Correctional Complex to provide parasite applicator training and prep for commercial testing for inmates in the ag field. We got four new 4-H clubs coming online this coming year. We got bee finishing schools, master gardeners, natural resource programs coming up, stroke awareness, brain activities. That's a program. Ah, so those are just a few of the things that we've uh, we're accomplished and what we hope to accomplish in uh, this coming year too. Okay, good. Well, thank, thank you. you. Is there anybody else? In there? I appreciate it. The uh, next item on our agenda today are bid openings for the uh, full uh, paving projects at Cedar Point, North Camden Lane, and Bennett Lane. Flynn Brothers contracting uh, 334,607 and dollars and 70 cents. Hall contracting uh, 316,573 dollars and seven cents. Louisville paving, $264,495.66. Mac construction, $366,029.13. Riverside paving, $348,000. Uh, Wingham paving, $289,753.56. Okay. So those would be for the uh, first group here. First group. The next group has to do with uh, North Camden Group. Flynn Brothers, $320,371.37. 
Hall contracting two hundred seventy two thousand eight hundred nineteen dollars and two cents. Louisville paving two hundred fifty two thousand one hundred seventy four dollars ninety two cents. Two fifty two judge. Two fifty two one seventy four. Thank you. Uh, Mac Construction 286, $286,265 and some change here. I'm going to read these pennies. Uh, Riverside Paving, $270,945. Wingham paving two hundred fifty three thousand seven hundred seventy six dollars. Group two. All right, now we'll do on uh, group three here. The Bennett Lane group. Flynn Brothers two hundred sixty one thousand five hundred twenty eight dollars. All contracting two hundred thirty four thousand four hundred ninety four dollars. Louisville paving two hundred twenty nine thousand one hundred and eighty four dollars. Mac construction two hundred sixty eight thousand forty five dollars. Riverside paving two hundred thirty six thousand two hundred twelve dollars. Our last bid, Wingham paving two hundred twenty six thousand and one dollar. Yeah, two twenty six here. Didn't they? Nobody else was. Nobody was the same number. 229 was the next closest. Somebody was close, but okay. Thank you. Judge, <clears throat> I think we have a lot of uh, people that bid in the courtroom, and I'd just like to thank you all for your bids. <clears throat> thank everybody who's participated. You going to award those today? Yes, I believe so. The uh, next item here, if we have, uh, we do have some money left, we can pay the bills. When you're ready. So move we pass the payables. Second. Anybody have any questions on anything in there? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries, eight to one. The next item, community uh, business, Oldham County tax rate. Uh, we've been talking about tax rates here uh, all afternoon. Uh, this is uh, my recommendation here that uh, we uh, go with the uh, compensating rate, and uh, that would require us to drop our uh, rate to uh, 8.7 from 8.9 cents per hundred. And... Uh, like to make that recommendation. Right, is there any discussion on that? Mr. Mr. Carter, do you think I need to read this uh, resolution? No. Okay. It's just resolution number 01080718, and uh, we have been at 8.9 cents per hundred and uh, we're dropping the rate to 8.7 cents per hundred. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. The uh, next item has to do with the uh, prisoner housing agreement and uh, I believe uh, uh, our jailer Simpson's here. Would you like to discuss that, Mike? Yes. Thank you, Judge. Um, yeah, I just want to let everybody know this is kind of a continuation of what we were doing down there. 
Uh, I think a couple weeks ago, you all had before you the housing contracts for Trimble and Henry. This would be similar to that. And what I've been doing, um, I was able to make some uh, connections with uh, the Sheriff's Association in, for the state of Indiana. I actually was able to put uh, on their statewide website to, um, that we were in the position. We had some beds available and uh, we're ready to market, uh, for lack of better terms, our open bed space. So today you should have a copy, a memorandum of understanding with Floyd County, which is just obviously right across uh, the river in Louisville. Um, that memorandum of understanding is, and I'll give you the most important um, you know, subjects of that, it's a $35 per day rate. And uh, concerning all medical, uh, they would be paying for all medical. Now these are state inmates that have been final sentenced through the Department of Corrections of Indiana is, wh is what we're talking about. And just, if, just for f education purposes and food for thought, how, how that compares to the Department of Corrections here in Kentucky, which we have state, Kentucky state inmates. They pay 3174 and we pay all medical. So you can kind of see how this is really on the surface a much, much better deal for, all, for us especially. So at 35 and they pay all medical. So obviously, Judge, uh, you probably have that. I know, right. I know Mr. Carter has looked at that and be glad to answer any questions from the court. Measure die. Yeah, Mike, um, what about transportation? Now you say the cases have been adjudicated? These have all been final sentenced mm -hmm. and all transportation, uh, Bob, uh, the sheriff, which I've met with him uh, and his chief deputy, they've been through the facility they bring them to us. Now, I'm not going to say there's not going to be an occasion because I told him we're in downtown Louisville all the time with our federal uh, pickups and that type of thing. Uh, it's all about coordination. You know, if, if they needed us to pick up, we could just slide over or vice versa. If they could run right across the river, we could do that. But uh, most of the transportation, they will be taking care of that. Well, wouldn't I, what I'm thinking of are situations where they um, – Prisoners go back for some sort of a, a, another type of a hearing. A, a, Detainer and that type of thing. Yeah, you know, motion hearing or uh, they want to do some sort of a, uh, a maybe a, a probation parole thing or something. Right. You know, Basically that, well, what, you wouldn't what, be able, you'd have to be with their, you know. What we've done there. there, what we've mm -hmm. done, we've talked about that. So they're going to basically, their internal admin people are going to screen these particular individuals that they're going to send us. Basically, no detainers, no additional holders. Okay, so we, caught, we talked about that. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about medical concerns. Even though they're going to pay for any type of medical costs that we may have to provide for them, but they're also going to screen them for their medical. As I said, screen for any type of holders or detainers. Um, they're actually what we call keepaways or no contacts. Mm -hmm. So they're, if they send me 10, in theory, I shouldn't have any problems about classification. All 10 of those people could be housed together. And he's also going to be sending like incident reports if this person happened to be in put in SAG for some reason to that type. Now, not to throw a fly in the ointment. Now, when you said you're in downtown Louisville all the time with a federal prisoner, let's just say for conversation that you've got you've got some federals with you, and then you slip over to Floyd to pick up a state guy, mm -hmm. and you have an accident. Where's all the liabilities lay in all that? Well, you know, obviously the liability. I used to be in the insurance business. You know, it follows the vehicle, not. The, not uh, the owner or the person that's necessarily driving it. Um, if in that particular case, uh, there's a holding facility at the, where we pick up at the U.S. Marshals. Yeah. So we get, they have no problems with us leaving that federal inmate in that holding right there. We can run over, pick that person up, if, it, if that should happen, yeah, I, come back our old, right across the river and then pick our guys up and then come back out. To over I just there. want to make sure that you guys are conscious, and I'm sure you are, but I just want yes. to bring this up that you know, you, you start getting, you start mixing and matching these prisoners, and sometimes it doesn't work right. well. Right. Okay. Sounds like you did a good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Likens. Thank you. Uh, how many Floyd County prisoners are you anticipating? What, what the sheriff actually just told me today, he said if, we, if this goes through by the court and get the proper signatures by everyone, uh, once we send it back over there so they get theirs, he's ready to, 30 to 40, he's ready to send. 
And, and what is our number at in our new jail I figured facility? someone would ask that. Today's numbers, let me flip over real quick. Our count this morning was two, uh, 240, 242. 47 of those are ours, of that 242. So 195 are generating money as we speak today. Those are people that are paying us a daily rate, um, combination of state inmates, federal, uh, Henry County, Trimble County, which again, you all just signed those housing contracts. So 195 of the 242 as we speak today. And the last thing I'd like to say is before our esteemed county attorney breaks his arm slapping himself on the back, he did add this paragraph five, which says that we're subject to Kentucky laws and don't go to federal court if they don't pay us. So. Right. Yeah. So thank, thanks, Mr. Carter. Uh, the um, you say they could send thirty to forty people. That's what he was saying, Judge. That's you know he's he's just waiting to get everything, all the paperwork signed, uh, and we're ready. I mean, we're ready. We have the beds, space available. Um, is there a jail in the downtown New Albany, or where is it? Um, Floyd County. Yeah, it's just just bare. I mean, you just get up. Uh, right, yeah. We actually we'll go through the new East End Bridge. To get there it's so quicker uh, it's about 20 minutes really? for, yeah now i haven't driven it myself so i don't well i'm the <laughs> one nickel hey right we're downtown let's go on sherman minton is free uh east end bridge costs eight dollars to go well, right right, yeah, right so exactly I exactly i hope we're not gonna be right uh but i okay uh should we in the second thing here this is a good good job mike of doing this should uh, should we just add the word says uh, Floyd County inmate housed in Oldham County is considered a Floyd County inmate, or should we say an Indiana Department of Corrections inmate? I don't know if we need that word Indiana there or not. Probably because I thought we were talking about the Department of Corrections of, of Kentucky, so it's the Indiana Department. It actually they yes John they are actually under although they're still just just like in Kentucky you know we have more state inmates in the jails in Kentucky that are in our prisons. Well, I don't understand all that, so I just assume maybe the Department of Corrections of Kentucky was involved. No, they're not involved here at all. Okay. This is the yeah, department. Yeah, we, we need to put that in Indiana Department of Corrections. So we just uh, pencil, you know, pen that in sure. before we, before I sign it. I'm fine. I'm, if John, if you're you good with that. Just make it a little clearer. Yeah, not, not a problem. For whatever reason. Not a problem. You know, I think we've kind of tweaked it a couple of times, and every time that I've sent it over through, through from you or from John to you to, to me to the sheriff, he's not hesitated one. He's added every. Well, paragraph. I just added that last paragraph because I, I want to make sure if we run into an issue that we get to try it here in Oldham right. County and don't have to go to Indiana. Right. right. Yeah, and he didn't it. hesitate. He agreed to that. That was not a problem. Major Greenwell. Thank you, Judge. Mike, you, when you say the Kentucky Department of Corrections doesn't have anything to do with this, they still have oversight. They have oversight. We fall under the, yes, uh, our, our facility does for inspections. and Yes, you're, that's, that is okay. correct, Steve. And then what was the rate for Trimble and Henry? Uh, I know it was just last month. This, fir this first year, it's $34. I didn't bring it, but I'm doing this by memory. It was 34 We go to 35 But it goes up. It's, it's progressively, percentage-wise. Each year, so next year, but this current calendar year or fiscal year is thirty-four dollars. Okay. So this is, you know, even a, a dollar more uh, than what they're paying. Well, good. Major Leslie. Yeah, Mike. Thanks for coming in reference and working hard to find additional areas where we can <clears throat> fill up beds. The forty-seven, I guess, are state prisoners uh, held at Floyd County. The ones that they're going to be sending? Correct. Yes, they're in the same identical position that the state of Kentucky is, Bob. There's such a backlog. So the state, the state inmates through the Department of Corrections of Indiana are just backing up into their jails, okay? The other thing with Floyd County, in addition to lowering their numbers down to a much safer, um, they're also, according to the sheriff, working on a huge expansion uh, project. And he said, when that happens, now they're not building a brand new footprint like what we did here. Hmm. They're talking about add-ons. That creates a, a potential another issue for them. We, we've talked about that, where they may have to lower their numbers even more to be able to do the renovation. And But that's somewhere down the road. Sure. And how many can they currently house? 
you know, they're not that big. They really surprised me when he told me. It was, um, I think they're like 200. And I just, for some reason, I just kept thinking. Um, but I'll also tell the court uh, is I've already received five other calls from five other sheriffs throughout the state of Indiana since it got on their website. So I don't know where this is going to lead us. But Floyd County is so close and so easy for us to be able to do it. So oh, it leads us to 350. Yeah, it could do it. Very so, easily. <laughs> Mike, uh, so let me make sure. So judge. once they're in our jail and they're going to and they're in our and they're going to Indiana State Prison, who will haul? Will the, will the Department of Indiana come over and get them and take them over there? Basically, Mike, what they've told us, and it's similar to, to the Department of Corrections here. He's going to be sending us people again, as uh, Magistrate Di and I were talking about, no detainers, no holders. These are people who have already been final sentenced and will be serving out for all practical purposes. So when they literally serve out their time, we will just process them out and they find their own way back to Indiana. It's, it's what, yeah, if he is, if he screens them to that level, we're hoping we're not gonna have medical issues uh, or, or detainer issues or anything else. But that's what, that's what we've worked on. Okay, Magistrate Leslie had yeah, another yes, question. Thank you for asking me. Since I, we got off the subject, of, uh, I'm going to let Steve Greenwell go first. Is this the class of inmate that we can use uh, in work detail? I've asked the same thing, Steve. So we, you and I have been around. You know, I've asked them. Uh, I'm not. It's, it's interesting. Indiana has a different one more class. Than, well, we have a class D level one, which is by law here in Kentucky. They have to be housed in our Kentucky jail system. And those are your worker bees, your minimum security. Um, we're going to look at that at the very least. If they qualify, we can work them inside. And that'll still let some out maybe then. And then might, there could be generating some more worker bees through this whole prod. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I remember. I was just wondering about the classification. Are these lower level sentences? They are, they are that going in. We've talked about that. They're, you know, they're not the class A's. They're not your capital murder cases. Not, that's not who they're sending us. Okay. So they're sending us the medium to the minimum is what we discussed. But, but again, I want to, you know, I'm going to research that some more before, you know, again, working them inside the facility, you know, if we screen them, we have a, we have a screening process, Bob, that we talk to these particular, even the class D's that go out to the recycling department, they have to sign off on all of our, we call it the do's and the don'ts is what right. we do. But we will screen them and, and, and we have that final decision whether we work them or not. Out of curiosity, when you give somebody a job that works outside during the day, mm -hmm. do they volunteer for this or request that service from you? A couple of things. If, they're, if they are, and you have to understand the classification, if we're housing Kentucky State Class D inmates, yes, they want to, and they, and they qualify to go out, whether they're working inside or even outside, they want that because they are in good time. That's their number one caveat. That's the carrot that's dangling out there because they can shorten their sentence. If they go out there, do what they're supposed to be. If they are a uh, uh, final sentence on a misdemeanor that they've committed here through Oldham County Court, mm -hmm. but they can still do the same thing. So if we put them on our work program and they work and keep their nose clean, they can shorten their 12 month sentence. You know, they can cut it pretty much in half. Yeah. Okay. So Thank they you. want it, they want to be on it. And the fact that they're outside breathing fresh air, We've got the, uh, <coughs> oh, the uh, voucher system. You know, we've had that in place for years where they, they get a little bit different food. These are all management tools. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Man should die. Um, another question, Mike. Are these prisoners, from what you've said since our, I last spoke to you, are these prisoners, are they on the tail end of their sentence? Are they serving out? You know, I don't know the actual timeline. That's something I don't think we really talked about uh, the only thing we did talk about is it will be people of the uh, medium to minimum security and with again as I said no detainers and they will be yeah they're probably within that timeline it could be 24 months and maybe they're going to serve out but when they're they, probably going to serve out and then go into into a halfway house before it could they, they hit the street because it just depends I would be concerned with them dumping someone into the, our system that even though they've been classified properly and all of that um, it, some of these people may be the first time in this type of we situation, initially. and that's a, that's a 
big long learning curve that could cause us problems. On the other we on initially the talked about that. So when that person serves out, because I asked that specific question, are they going to need, would they be needed to be transported back into the state of Indiana? And then you all release them based off of your jurisdiction and that. He was going to research, but in our discussion phase, he said, I don't think that's going to be an issue if, if they're being housed with us, that they can be uh, served out. And we just release them, just like we release somebody that's served out here. Um, but that could, that could change. I'd be concerned about that final release because they are their prisoners and releasing them out of our jail could come back and haunt us. I think right. they, I think they need well, to I would, I'm not going to do anything unless I have the paperwork. I yeah, promise yeah. you that. They need to go back to the nest before they Well, uh, yeah, they and I agree, I agree with that too. All right, but, okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, um, is there a motion that I be allowed to sign this contract? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Judge. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you all very much. The uh, next item we're going to discuss here has to do with a uh, sewer and drainage easement agreement. Um, Mr. Clark. Okay. Um, what you have in front of you is a very standard uh, construction and maintenance agreement for uh, our Odom County Environmental Authority, i.e. the sewer district, to put a pipe through Briar Hill Park to connect. Uh, they are currently being required by the Division of Water to take the Ash Avenue plant offline and take it to the new uh, treatment plant over there. And this is part of the way of getting easements and, and by design they they put as much of the sewer on public lands to to reduce the uh, the impact of it so this is basically it says for ten dollars um, it gives them the right to do it. it it doesn't affect how you use the park or anything i mean you don't we don't build buildings in our park or anything now so it's just basically a construction easement and then a permanent easement to maintain to fix and maintain the line at the, at the sewer department's expense. All right, is there a motion to allow me to uh, sign this contract for this easement? Anybody have any questions on it? I should die. Um, is this, you know, this is a chopped up plat, <clears throat> but is this going to run next to the uh, utility easement along the creek where you, well, LG&E came in a few months, a few years ago and had uh, Come cut those trees down and all that. Correct. We actually tried to get permission to be in the same easement, but they wouldn't let us in their easement. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Yeah. In contract, so this would be right next to it. Right. All right. All right. Motion made and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. The next item has to do with our uh, county road aid cooperative agreement uh, resolution here. Um, this is, uh, state is willing to, uh, give us, uh, $651,685 and 71 cents over, uh, the next 12 months to uh, help with, uh, road work. It's divided up into two checks. Uh, each check, uh, first one's 60% and the second one 40% each check. Is a subtracted uh, three percent comes out of each check for our participation in the county road emergency fund. So um, I think we know how this works. Works the same every year. Uh, Magistrate Greenwell, do you like to say anything about that? It is a standard thing that we sign every year, Judge, uh, with the state. And uh, after we open those bids, uh, we'd be glad to take their money. So. All right, and then. Um, Let's see here. Uh, I think the resolution uh, requires uh, uh, individual votes. Okay, so we do have a motion to accept this? I second. So moved. Second. Yes. All right, moved and seconded. And uh, I'll have uh, Sheila call the roll, please. <clears throat> Magistrate Tice? Yes. Magistrate Leslie? Yes. Magistrate Hounds? Yes. Magistrate Eldridge? Yes. Magistrate Lykins? Yes. Magistrate Greenwell? Yes. Magistrate Logsdon? Yes. Magistrate Dye? 
Yes. And Judge Vogel. Yes. Motion carries 9-0. Next item is uh, the DLZ contract modification for the Allen Lane widening project. And uh, be me. Uh, I'll say Belinda, you changed. That's it. <laughs> Belinda's on vacation. So um, Amy Alvey with Oldham County Planning Development Services. Uh, this is a contract modification with DLG, I'm sorry, DLZ. Uh, for engineering design services for the Allen Lane widening project, uh, an underpass project in the amount of $36,351. Um, this project is funded with federal dollars requiring a 20% local match. And uh, the contract modification is needed to develop final construction plans, documents, and right of way revisions. And KYTC has approved this proposal. So we're asking uh, fiscal court to allow Judge Vogel to sign the agreement. Judge, I'd like to make a motion that we allow you to sign the agreement um, as presented. Second. Move and second this. Is there any discussion on this? All right, hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Good job. Next item is our uh, agreement with the uh, school district here uh, for uh, security officers. You'll see that um, I think it's fairly well known in the community that uh, the Board of Education and Fiscal Court have entered into an agreement to uh, provide uh, officers for schools uh, for the coming school year. Uh, we'll have a, a total of 10 officers uh, in the school system. Nine will come from Oldham County and uh, one will come from the city of LaGrange. Uh, we're adding uh, six officers we already have three out there that are school resource officers uh, these are school security officers and their function will be uh, somewhat different than the school resource officer resource officers interact heavily with the students and uh, try to uh, develop a rapport and uh, be able to uh, assist through their position with the uh, security in the schools but also uh, things that may extend outside the school that could involve the police department. The school security officers will be also interacting with students. They're not uh, intended to be uh, mannequins or, uh, you know, some people don't speak to students, but their primary function will be to be providing security. Uh, visibility is important, checking doors, windows, locks, uh, monitoring and parking conditions, and uh, just overall providing security services. As I say, we have uh, there's been some discussion about where these uh, officers will be allocated, but I'd just like to say that we'll have 10 in the schools and uh, they will rotate among the various schools. Uh, we're not gonna detail their specific locations and in regard to uh, just maintaining a uh, more element of surprise and a higher degree of security. So uh, we think this is an excellent agreement. I've had nothing but positives from everyone in the community that has spoken to me about it. Obviously the children are our number one resource in this community and uh, as our teachers and school staff, we want to do everything we can to protect them. And I believe this uh, agreement between the board and the Fiscal court will be uh, take a real big step in that direction and be something that we can uh, look to with uh, confidence and uh, pride in our community. So, I'd like to make that motion to allow okay. you to sign the agreement and also for Chief Smith to sign the agreement. Obviously, this has already been passed by the school board because their signatures are already on here. So, we'll be the last to uh, to approve this and it's implemented almost immediately. Second. All right, moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on this? Mr. Greenwell? Judge, it seems like, I don't know, it may just be a timing issue, but we decided to do this and then Jefferson County decided to get busy and I can't help but think uh, that uh, maybe they should have paid a little bit more attention to our model. Uh, than theirs, but uh, anyway, I'm just uh, very excited about this and I think it's gonna be a good situation. Right, thank you. Uh, Magistrate Hounds. Um, Judge, I, I'd like to echo the same thing from Magistrate Greenwell. I think it's great. I think it's uh, progress forward in direction and it's an unfortunate thing that we have to do it, but it's a necessity for the time. And I 
will commend Chief Smith on the efforts that he's done to uh, get this project off the ground and hopefully uh, everybody will be hired and ready to go for the first day of school next week. Right. I want to commend Chief Smith as well, who, who uh, really has done a tremendous job coordinating this, pulling it together, working with the Board of Education and their re security people. And uh, I'm very confident in his leadership that this program is going to go very well. All right. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 When opposed, motion carries. As far as uh, now on our HR committee, Magistrate Logston, we're going to. Uh, yes, Judge. Oops, sorry, I, got, I skipped I one. <laughs> Let me do this. We had a uh, minor emergency come up today in a building, and we'd like uh, Orkin to visit that building. Uh, I don't know if you have a. I have a contract here, and uh, because it is a contract, I need to sign this. It's uh, only for $200, but uh, uh, motion to approve. Judge, I'd like to make a motion that you be allowed to sign this agreement with Orkin Pest Control. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Aye. Getting bugged somewhere, and we don't need it. So. <laughs> <coughs> all right, now we'll uh, get on to the uh, next item here, and that's uh, Magistrate Logson. Uh, thank you, Judge. Uh, before you all, you have a job re uh, requirements for the security officers, the SSO, and I'm asking the court to approve this new job um, requirements, please. Um, it's 01.02.01 job requirements for school security officers or SSOs. Second. All right, moved and seconded. The uh, job description for school security officers uh, be approved. I might ask just for a way of explanation. Chief, do you want to come up and provide any additional information uh, in regard to the security officers, uh, you know, versus the resource officer? Judge, can I ask a question while Chief's coming up? Do we need to approve the Oldham County Fiscal Court employee contract for these officers, or is it just? I think the contract is approved by the Merit Board. Okay. I think, I think contracts approved by fiscal court. Don K here? Yes, sir. It's the next one All up. Right. Senator right. Personnel. Go ahead. What, why don't you just uh, elaborate? Maybe I covered it enough, but maybe okay. there's something else. Yeah, I think you did an excellent job covering it. But a, a school resource officer has more administrative duties within the school, uh, issues with the students that might come up. Uh, he'll do mainly also do criminal investigations and, and unfortunately we probably do quite a few in the schools for different things um, they also develop a rapport they'll teach classes along the way different things they do a lot of drug presentations and anti-bullying classes so the school resource officer is more interactive with the school as far as educational things investigative uh, investigative issues that might come up the school security officer basically i mean if you want to sum it up very quickly it is to protect the school, protect the students and the staff. I mean, that's what they're there for. Now, there will be a list of things they will do. Uh, actually, we're still working with the school board to determine exactly what they want, I mean, what they want the school security officers to do. But basically, they're going to be on the schools, in the schools, around the schools, uh, check and make sure everything's okay. Uh, the judge summed it up very well about what their requirements are. And basically, they're going to be looking for anything out of the ordinary that could be a potential danger. And that's what they're there for. And I agree. I think it's a very, I think it's a very good program. That's kind of the difference between the two. Okay. Now, obviously, the school security officers will become involved in the kids, and they can't, they can't help but become involved in the kids. The students are going to want to get close to them, get to know them, talk to them. We are going to encourage that. But in addition to that, I think that report is great. And in addition to that, though, they do have this security, security responsibilities. And I think we have five of the six lined up to be hired. And uh, they're all previous Oldham County police officers, very good police officers. So we're, we're pretty well good to go. All right, good. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to say one thing. I, I talked to Chief Smith about this, and, and obviously these these officers that we're hiring uh, could be used 
during the summertime, they're paid for nine months, is that correct? Nine months, and the other three months, we could use those as reserve uh, officers to come in and, and take somebody or help out if somebody's off ill or sick. But by or statute, if we hire a officer underneath the contract, we can hire that officer for one year contract. And every year they're renewable. By position, they're going to be school security officers. But when the duration of their work is over with the school, we could use them during the summertime or even like a high activity times so when we need help. If we've got some unseen vacancies that occur, we can use them to fill those in because they will have sworn police powers. And that's kind of the extra benefit to this. You know, the judge has agreed when he signs them in to when he swears them in that they'll be sworn for a full year. Now they become inactive on the county on the payroll for the schools at the last at the last day of school. Uh, but we did build into this contract an additional 10 days for training because they will be required to um, complete all the training of any regular police officer on the Oldham County Police Department. But you're right, Commissioner Light, because that's a good part of the program. If we get into a tight spot, we need some extra help, we can call them. And I've talked to the five that we're hiring so far, and they're all, they're all agreeable to that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. All right, we've got a motion on the floor in the second to uh, approve this uh, job description. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? So moved. Next item, Road Committee, Magistrate Greenwell. Thank you, Judge. Uh, we have before us today a performance bond release in the amount of $11,700 uh, for CNW Park, and Scott Harris uh, has looked into this, and we took it before the road committee today and passed it unanimously. Okay. And then also, I believe we have some uh, bids to uh, award today. We do. Uh, I wanted to point out that uh, Corey Resnick, the Public Works Director at the City of LaGrange, has also approved this bond release, as this is within his jurisdiction. Okay. Uh, let's uh, before we go on here. Let's. Uh, you want to make a motion to that effect? Yes, Judge. I'll make a motion that we uh, release the performance bond in the amount of eleven thousand seven hundred dollars. Second. Right, moved and seconded. All in favor? Please aye. say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Here's uh, Mayor Greenwell. Do you want to announce these bids? Uh, I've got them here, I think. Somebody check me on the amounts, and we'll need the cents uh, also in the motion. Uh, group one. Scott, why don't you do it? You're the one that went over them. It's Louisville Paving on the first one, I assume. Yes, uh, the, there's stars next to each one. Uh, Louisville Paving for group one in the amount of $264,495.66. Louisville Paving for Group 2, $252,174.92. And Group 3 goes to Wingham Paving for $226,001.06. Can we do them all at one time? That's a total of $742,671.64. And that's below our limit of what we can spend. We believe it is. Yes. Okay. Judge, I'll make the motion that we award those bids based on the uh, county engineer's uh, uh, recommendation. Second. Second. All right. All right. Um, is there any discussion on this? Mr. Carter? Yes. Um, with uh, Louisville paving, we've had a couple of issues yet that are unresolved on work at the uh, jail, at the detention center. Yes. Is there any linkage between these contracts and that? Are there? Can we establish any? I can't respond to that offhand, but I mean, if, if it's a question, you mean the the fact that they haven't completed the other contract? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a couple of gray areas regarding. Uh, drainage and outside work there that haven't been solved yet that's two separate things i think the question would be is whether or not you with those questions unresolved whether you want to make whether you want to approve them as a contractor for this particular project okay i think you can take past performance into into account in awarding the contracts 
Definitely. Well, or, or failure. I don't want to make a, a over huge issue out of it, but I think we still have stand. Am I correct on that? We've got some unresolved issues there, and uh, uh, I don't want to say they haven't done a good job in many respects, but we've got a couple of uh, items that aren't buttoned down, and uh, we're having a hard time getting them buttoned down. Yes, Judge. In reference to these areas that you say are gray, is there a dollar amount that we're talking about? Uh, we're currently withholding, I believe, thirty-four thousand dollars. Thirty-six thousand dollars. No, yeah, it's a different I'm, project. I, that's altogether. for the paving uh, for last fall or for the last calendar year that hasn't been completed yet. Um, but we do have a significant number of issues. Uh, at the jail uh, that we've we've issued a report on that haven't been solved yet is this the same company yes yes uh, and i think we should bypass them if you would like i can uh, the the next lowest bid on phase one and phase two is also wingham they were they were the lowest on three the total difference between all lowest bids and picking wingham is twenty six thousand eight hundred and fifty nine dollars and forty cents <laughs> For a total of seven hundred and sixty-nine thousand five hundred and thirty dollars and sixty-eight cents, and it is also still below our best guess at the sixty-five thirty-five rule. Total seven sixty-nine five thirty sixty-eight cents. I think it's justified. Well, uh, is there some uh, middle ground here where we could, uh, you know? Have, have this go forward uh, as presented here subject to their, you know, <laughs> coming to terms with us on these other things. Uh, I mean, you know, I certainly appreciate the low bidder here, but I don't want to mess that up. But, uh, you know, if there's any leverage in here, I'd like to use that as well. I don't. You know, I don't know. We table this issue to I don't know. No, we don't. We don't want to table. We don't want to table. We want to go forward. If I could, I don't know about this thirty-six thousand dollar issue, but the the jail issue's been going on now for long enough. Now, uh, you know, I'm like uh, Magistrate uh, uh, Leslie down there. Um, I don't want to kick them in the teeth or take a middle ground position like you want, but I think uh, it's time to send a message. It's only 20, how much difference is it, Scott? $26,000? Yes, sir. Well, they're holding up, you know, it's like a dime holding up a dollar. So I think that we need to maybe make, make a position statement here. And then plus there's the other issue of the, in the beginning of the, of the excavation that we've talked about with them that, that we had a problem with. So, I mean, this keeps mounting up. Judge, have they made any uh, effort at correcting the thing out on Jericho Road? Where th yes, um, they've satisfied the state uh, to the point of the state wants to make sure that the grass is going to grow. Um, they have uh, one erosion problem um, that I haven't seen. I haven't been out there in a week. Um, but that the last inspection, they said, well, we got to see that the grass grows, clean out the end of the pipe, which had erosion in it, and uh, shore up the erosion uh, off the edge of the road. So they've so made... They are making improvements. Okay. Yes. Uh, we've investigated it with the state three times now. So that's a lot of inspections. Judge. Stan, off the top of your head, uh, are you able to uh, basically outline what uh, are the issues of controversy that, at the jail? Yeah, and it's... This one's a real tough one because we got different parties and need, nobody's taking responsibility. They're each saying they met the contract. So it's disputed. Um, we've had a little bit of breakthrough. The architect has put pressure on them and uh, the contractor has stepped up and said, okay, we will do this this fall. And it's been some items improved. The only thing running through my mind is if at the end of the day we land up having to go out there and do some of the grading and fix some of the stuff herself, I think it'll be a lot less than $26,000. So I think we could be penny wise and pound foolish here 
Um, so to me, I think what I would evaluate is the performance we expect to be done on the, these jobs if they will get the bid, if they will get it done, and, and we truly save $26,000 compared to the next bid, um, and continue to um, try to resolve what's going on at the detention center, knowing that it may just be a case where we step up the county and then try to collect it. From uh, perhaps because we've had this discussion here today, uh, I can call Louisville Paving and tell them that they're, you know, that uh, they made it over the top by the skin of their teeth. But uh, you know, I mean, right? I mean, we don't know. I mean, we no. just we've got some gray areas out there that uh, everybody's ducking on that uh, we don't think they should. So. I agree. We had we had issues in the beginning. Dirt was carted off. That was uh, we didn't understand that it was part of normal operating procedure. We were told, and did we ever get back what was taken off? We're not sure. You know. Mm. Right, I Judge. Offer. If I may again, uh, you know, and we've heard this so many times from the one, and I'm not going to call any names out, but the one individual says, "I'm not in the paving division. I don't know anything about all of that." Well. All I know is when you sign the check, and you sign it out to Louisville Paving. You don't say Louisville Paving slash non-paving division. or Louisville. I can't support this on the fact, remember, you're the one who brought this to the table. I'm taking your lead on this. I know it. I know so I'm not going to support, I'm not going to support and give them these contracts. You, can I, you asked me about, you, you cannot accept the bid conditionally. We bid it out. And that's an offer for a contract. And they, uh, they came in at the lowest bid. If we approve the bid, then we've got a contract. Uh, if you put a condition on it, we don't have a contract. Uh, an additional, con an additional uh, if you add an additional item to the contract, you don't have a contract. And it goes back to them. So I think. From a legal standpoint, you either ought to accept the bid or reject the bid one way or the other. Judge? Yes, sir. I think we've already taken a vote on this. I think it's $26,000 of the taxpayers' money. I think we should go along with it. But they do need to be sent a strong message that this is an issue. So we haven't voted on it yet. I thought we voted. No. No. We've got a motion and a second. Oh, I th I'm sorry. For discussion. No. All right, we're in discussion here on this. If I may add some, add some data, uh, the difference in bid package two is only sixteen hundred dollars. The big difference in bids is package one. So, if you wanted to to break them up differently, we're talking about sixteen hundred dollars, not twenty six thousand dollars. And we did set a precedence of taking the low responsible bid a year ago now when we did not award to the low bidder, we awarded to the second low. Based on past performance. Based on past performance. So we have, this has happened before <clears throat> in recent times. Judge, when today's world, people get away with shoddy work and nobody says anything, they say that's good enough. And I see it so many times, and I'm tired of people who do shoddy work. And I don't agree with giving people who do shoddy work additional work, since we've got two issues, two different times, and it's still shoddy. So why give them a third or a fourth when we have two that are already lousy? There's no incentive to, for them to continue it when we continue to pay for mediocre work. I can't vote for Louisville Paving. All right. Major Greenwell. Judge, I made the motion to award the bid to uh, the three, the two different contractors on the three different paving groups, and I'm going to withdraw my motion. We want to we'll take withdraw my second. Okay, we want to take them one at a time. Yes, sir. Okay, Major Likens. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd ask Major Dye to clarify. We we entered into a site contract with the jail, with Louisville Paving Company, 
and it didn't have anything to do with the builder of the jail. Is that correct? So we're not talking about a, a, a beef we have with the... Turn your mic on. We don't have a, a, a dispute with the... With the builder of the jail. No, it's not the facility. It was about the, uh, the dirt the site preparation, which is a different contract. And they were, uh, some dirt was being removed on a Sunday that was plainly, they were plainly told in the beginning, Judge, you were in the meeting, that it normally it was, well, the contractors get the ex any extra dirt, they, it's theirs. We said, no, that extra dirt is ours, black and white. And on Sunday, they were uh, taking it out tracks over to the uh, Walmart on um, Veterans Memorial Parkway and filling in the traffic islands. So, and I, I called them out on it, and they said, well, that's our dirt. And I said, no, no. And it got a little heated, but, but then we had this other situation which has to do with the construction out of the building of the facility, but of the site uh, drainage and stuff in the back where, you know, now that Stan has pointed out, and we keep getting this finger-pointing deal. Well, you know, every time they turn around, uh, uh, Louisville Payton will say, yeah, we can fix that, but here's the number. Here's the price. And we said, no, 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 no. Architect said, that's on your contract. And they said, no, it's not. So it's going to end up in our lap. So if we're going to have to end up paying it somewhere down the road, then I'd rather, you know, we're going to pay a little bit more for this paving. But as, you know, I've already heard, I mean, I'm kind of to the point here, I'm not going to award them more work after, I mean, they've done a lot of good work. But at some point in time, you've got to say, hey, enough, enough works and, you know, this is enough. If you had a chance to redeem yourself, you didn't do it, this is a penalty and I'm not going to vote for them. Thank you for that clarification. Although there might be two different divisions of Louisville Paving, there's still one company, Louisville Paving. Thank you. Magistrate Eldridge. Yes, Judge, I'd make a motion that we award these three to Wingham Paving with an emphasis on awakening Louisville Paving. I'll second that motion. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Uh, discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. Motion carried. No. No. Whoops. <laughs> All right, wait a minute. Motion carried uh, six to three, I believe. All right. No, no, and no on the other end. Two ends. Nice. Nice. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, there you go. Next item. Uh, has to do with, uh, where are we here? Utilities. Util utilities, Magistrate Eldridge. Thank you, Judge. The Utilities Committee has met with the city of Crestwood. Uh, we've all heard about the teacher's retirement <coughs> and how it was, quote, unquote, snuck through in the middle of the night to a sewer bill. Uh, the sewer bill that it was, quote, unquote, snuck in with allowed for utilities to go out of their county into other counties and own piping facilities and whatnot. That particular bill enables MSD, who has always handled Crestwood sewers, but now they want to come out and buy and own the pipe and the facilities. This is kind of a windfall for Crestwood. Uh, they will eradicate somewhere between 2.2 and 2.5 million dollars in debt. Uh, it's also a windfall for their customers. Uh, at a minimum, they're gonna save about $10 a month. At a maximum, commercial customers may save up to 50. For those magistrates here, you will have received this information in your packets. However, that has been changed. I will call your attention to what is in your folder today. Uh, there are several items that have been changed only one that is substantive. Uh, most of the items that have been changed had to do with typos, misnumbering. You may have noticed in the original document you got that there were two fives, two sevens, uh, just was not put together real well. So that has been straightened out that way. The substantive change is in item number five, which is on page four. And basically what that does is in the original version that you received, they could enforce up to a 10% increase with no way of 
going through any approval process. What the document currently says is that MSD may not raise rates on these customers by more than 6.9% per calendar year without the approval of the Crestwood City Commission. So what we're asking the judge to sign today, if this approved and it came out unanimously out of the Utilities Committee, is that he be able to sign this, which will allow the City of Crestwood to sell their sewer system to MSD, helping the City of Crestwood, saving the people of Crestwood that are on sewers a considerable amount of money, and also putting the power of Crestwood to review those rates at 6.9% which is the amount that in Louisville they've got to go through the Metro Council to be done. Also make note that this one, different than your original one, says 6.9% per calendar year. The other one said 10% and did, did not note that it was calendar year. So coming out of the Utilities Committee, we would make a motion that we allow Judge Vogel to sign this. Second. Moved and seconded that I be allowed to sign the interlocal agreement between uh, Oldham County, City of Crestwood, and MSD. Is there a discussion? Mm -hmm. Magistrate Likens. Thank you. Uh, I would like to pose this question to Magistrate Eldridge. If I remember right, back in 1996, there was a 50% rate difference between Jefferson County customers and Oldham County customers in the joint interlocal agreement. Is that addressed in this the document. joint interlocal agreement and I don't know that it was 50 percent the joint interlocal agreement had to do with the amount of money that was spent in Crestwood for infrastructure there was a charge on the bill to repay that and that is where the savings of 10 to 50 dollars a month comes in that particular charge will go away but does this replace in all of the original 1996 that would be item agreement. six in the contract in front of you, termination of 1996 interlocal agreement. Okay, so those customers who've been paying this additional rate are no longer going to pay that? I believe if you will read that, that is what that says. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Manager Tice. The one thing when I was going over it earlier after we got it um, is in the same page, number four, but it was number seven on new customers where that uh, if there's any new customers that go inside the city of Crestwood and the existing service area, or if Crestwood expands its boundaries through annexation after the execution of this purchase agreement, it will the MSD customers, they will become MSD and will be subject to MSD rates. Now, if Crestwood expands into what is now territory that is um, Oldham County Sewer District, does that mean that if they expand, then all of a sudden that area and those customers will now become MSD customers? Speaking to Mr. Dybel earlier today, Mayor Dybel, what he was saying is, is that if the city of Crestwood annexes an area that does not already have sewers, then they would become MSD customers. There is concern from OSEA in regard to this. But the only areas that Dennis sees anything like this happening are in the areas of Brownsboro, where OC is currently not able to cover that area. And I would defer to Stan if he has anything to add. And I had that concern, which OC, or how we say it, the Seward, Oldham County Sewer District, I had that concern also. And I'm not sure that, um, is that right for us to allow that to happen for them? I don't think, and again, council can step in, but I don't think we can stop a city from annexing. And generally with annexation, it is assumed that they're going to provide something that they couldn't already get is the reason for the annexation, right. such as sewers. Well, our sewer is one of our most challenging, and we need more customers for the Oldham County sewer is where my questioning is coming from. We don't have enough now, and if we give we could be giving away a lot of potential properties. Um, and to tell you the truth, and it just ran through my mind, uh, there's a big project coming up towards Brownsboro on, I think, a group of apartments. And will that be part of that? Uh, it's not it's in the already city, city of Crestwood. It's Crestwood. already. Yes. Okay. Well, could Crestwood keep expanding and uh, gobbling things up? Uh, I guess I'm not an expert on annexation, but uh, 
I guess to a certain extent uh, they could, but uh, the, the, I think the fundamental question here that Magistrate uh, Eldridge identified is that is there service there? If uh, Oldham County Sewer District has service in an in a area now, it can't be bumped out, and there are lines of demarcation uh, for the sewer districts in the county, their territories, but uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, OSEA is not able, some places are just too far for them to reach. And uh, the cost right now uh, to uh, get a pipe from the new plant into the Oldham County part of Norton Commons is a uh, million plus. Well, they have to go borrow the money to do it, put another, you know, straw on the camel's back, so to speak, and uh, it, it's a problem. It's a problem. So you can't deny people service if it can't be provided by one agency, then the other has the ability to move in there. Okay. I'd like to ask our county attorney's opinion. This question came up before, has come up before, and Osea owns the sewer lines now, correct? No. They don't? They're, they're owned by Crestwood. They're owned by Crestwood. Yes. Well, the last time this came up Osea, about expanding the sewer system, uh, Crestwood was going to annex property and expand the sewer. And the reason they couldn't do that is because the sewers were owned by the Oldham County Sanitation District and not Crestwood. And uh, where there, there was an to? amendment to the interlocal agreement because they had actually already expanded the sewers uh, without an amendment to the interlocal agreement. And they had to go back and, and amend it again to include that area. So I think the issue here is that if we approve this agreement, then Crestwood can annex whatever area they think the sewer needs to go to without any further amendment of the interlocal agreement. But as I recall that issue when it came up, uh, actually it was the Oldham County Sanitation District that owned the sewers. Are you talking about Brownsboro? Yes. Uh, now maybe that's a different situation. Way but it's the same. It's the same area and the same issue, and that's what had to be done for them to even. They had to go back and amend the interlocal agreement because they had expanded the sewers uh, without a, without expanding the sewer district throughout through the interlocal agreement. And that was looked at by me and Wyatt Tarrant and Combs. Now, I don't know what the ramifications of this agreement would be if we're now saying that the sewers are owned by Crestwood and not the Oldham County Sanitation District, or OSEA. Well, in, in uh, this particular request, that the, the pipes are owned by Crestwood. They borrowed money to, to put them in. Uh, and I believe, and now maybe I'm confused about what you're saying, but uh, when we had the Brownsboro issue, it was uh, MSD and Crestwood were on one side of 329. The Oldham County Sewer District was on the other side of 329, but the Oldham County Sewer District didn't have any facilities there. They just, it was just part of their designated service area. And what I recall was that they were going to enter into an agreement with MSD to come across to serve the Brownsboro school that was planned, but uh, they had to pay OSEA, uh, you know, a, a surcharge or a treat rate or something to, to be able to do that. So um, now you might be speaking to a different issue, but that's... Uh, this came up recently, and I went back and looked at the amendment to the inter interlocal agreement, and the interlocal amendment to the interlocal agreement went back and uh, and, pre and went back and approved the expansion of the sewers that had taken place without the amendment of the interlocal agreement. And the reason it had to be amended was because the Oldham County Sewer District, it was my understanding, owned 
the sewers and therefore they could not expand. I'm, I'm just saying, I think the ultimate import of the agreement will be, if you approve it, is that Crestwood can annex and expand sewers anywhere in their area they want to, to without amending the interlocal agreement. As long as it's within the city, long, as long as it is within the city of Crestwood. Because what they were gonna do last time is the Brownsboro School is that they were going, Crestwood was gonna annex the right of way to put in the sewers to the Brownsboro School. And the only reason they couldn't do it is because they didn't own the sewers. MSD did, I'm not MSD, OSEA did. Do you know anything about that? and asked him who owned the sewers in Crestwood, and he said the city of Crestwood. Right. Crestwood owns the sewers that have been there in, in, in expansion. And getting into the Brownsboro Scroll, and I haven't read the agreement to refresh, but basically you cannot expand a sewer system by annexation, okay? That's been upheld court right. law, okay? And that's what we dealt with before. But the question is uh, providing services to it. So, like, when the Brownsboro Scroll if it was to come on, OSEA was to own the pipes and stuff and, and then pay a treat rate to MSD until such time they could handle the flow themselves. Similar to what's going on with Glen Oaks Moser Farm, we own the pipe over there, MSD is treating it and, there's, and they, they collect a full rate for treating it and stuff, but if we are in discussions now, OSEA is about putting a pipe over there and taking that into the OSEA suit sewer system um, and so I would assume that the interlocal with the city of Crestwood when they sell their sewer system MSD steps into their position as an a successor and all those agreements are still in place which means MSD may provide sewer service outside the current area but those pipes will be owned by OSEA, and OSEA will charge the customers its rates, then pay MSD a, a treatment rate, is the way it will work. So. So, so are you saying that you believe the agreement, that this interlocal agreement, that they cannot expand the sewers without the permission of OSEA? No, they cannot go, my understanding, going by memories, they cannot, by annexation, the, the city limits and the sewer limits are not one continuous, and one does. So the Oldham County Stormwater District area is set. Right. And even if the city of, Ant of Crestwood Annex is part of it and goes into that area, it's still Oldham County you know, Sewer District's uh, treatment area. But, but they can go into that district without the approval of OSEA. No, no, because our C is the ones that are going to technically be providing the sewer service via an agreement with MSD. I just want to make sure that that the that everybody understands what the agreement is, and that we're not. Yeah, and what, I wish I had it in front of me and looked at it, but the whole idea was to protect the OC is, is protecting their district and keeping it from being taken away without their permission or agreement or working something out. Because when that happens, when you, for lack of a better term, cherry pick the, the new customers and the new stuff, it hurts the current ratepayers of the sewer district um, because the facilities and stuff, are, you know, MSD's getting them and it we're not helping sharing the cost in it by expanding the OSEA sewer district. <clears throat> so, confusing. Well, we, I think we have a motion on the floor here in a second to uh, uh, permit uh, Crestwood to go through with this agreement with uh, MSD. Is there any further discussion? Uh, hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries eight to one. Next item on the agenda has to do with um, personnel actions. We're going to you know, skip the one there and uh, crossed one off. So we have our uh, security school officer contract uh, 
agreement people to uh, hire uh, contracts. Uh, I believe we have the contract in here. Is that Magistrate Logston? You uh, okay? It's uh, it's right. It's in it's in my book behind the pages here. Does everybody have a copy of it? Clerk says they do. All right. So. I no, guess uh, maybe we need to approve the contract first of all. Judge, I'd like, like to uh, make a motion. We approve the employee contract. Second. Is there any discussion on this uh, contract? No. Contractors, one for each one of the individuals. Well, no. no, I think they're all the same, aren't they? You know, so why would, you know, this is our contract for hired individuals but we're going to judge yes, sir. while chief smith's maybe walking up here i don't have a problem with voting on these ones that we have names for and a contract for but we're getting ready to start school next week and we're getting ready to hire an officer or try to find another officer to fill the void of that last one and we won't meet before school starts <coughs> to vote on the hiring of that officer so, uh, Chief, what? That, that is a contingency we discussed with the school board. Um, we told them if we could not fill all six positions, the last one we would do in secondary employment. And we are currently working with the school board and how that position will be paid until we get a full time employee in there. So, you won't? We would take, take one, of, one of our own people. Yeah, part time job. I see. I yeah. see. You know, I don't know if we can do it every day, but we can do it enough times during a week that we can make it random enough that it'll look like someone's there all the time. And we, as we made the assignments for the schools for the five that we have, the one we did not assign was Oldman County High School, because that's right down the street, police department. The cars pass there all the time. We're gonna tell our police cars, you know, during a no normal routine business, drive through the parking lot, and make it look like there's cops there all the time until we get a, someone assigned there. And that'll that's, be the number six that's number when six, you find yes, the right person. Yes, sir. Okay. I don't know if you have a Greg Collette's contract in there signed. He signed it just this morning, so his is signed. I do have it with me if you want to vote on that as well. I see what you're saying. Oh, there's, that's the only one. He hasn't signed, signed his. Judge, I'm going to give it to you. This is a signed contract. Greg Collette. Okay. Right, yeah. I'll give that. Okay. Well, I'm going to have more paper here. <laughs> Judge, these others were signed. Okay, I understand what you're saying now about contracts. I the only one okay, everybody has signed one of these. Yes, sir. Okay. We, have, we, have and we, 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 we do have, without giving any names, do have, you know, other candidate or candidates yes, close. Yes, sir. It would seem to me, Judge, just as a matter of order, and I don't see Tina here, but it seems like it would be cleaner to approve the language of the contract and then vote to approve the new hires rather than well that's what i yeah that's what i was trying to get to yeah right. i think it's where we need to be right. Second, uh, to the contract for the sso officers second moved and seconded is there any discussion on that hearing none all in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. anyone opposed motion carries <laughs> now we'll go to the individuals correct as you logston Yes. Right. <coughs> name them all at once, or do you want to name each individual ones? I'd say you could name them as a group. Okay. Judge, I'd like to make a motion that we accept uh, Kenneth Collette, James Latham, Greg Ford, uh, Roy Franklin, and uh, Larry B. Uh, Simpson as our new SSO officers. Second. Second. All right, moving second. Any discussion on that? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Now we have a uh, retirement. The chief, you want to? Uh, uh, Adrian to Dolman, retired. Um, 16 years service with the uh, Oldham County Police Department, four years service with other agencies that accumulated into 20 plus years of retirement. And he is out of town on vacation, joined his retirement. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, Adrian was a very good officer, served the county very well, and, and we're going to miss him. Judge, I would regretfully make that motion. Second. All right, moved and seconded. We accept the retirement of Officer Adrian Dolman and 
wish him the best of everything in his future plans. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carried. Next item here is resignation of an officer, Demetrius Lindsay. I'll make that motion. I'll make that motion, Judge. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? So moved. We also have our resignation uh, for uh, Tyler Shaw, effective, uh, I guess, at the end of this week at dispatch. That's, that's not me, but. <laughs> Pardon? That's not me. He's no, right. Go ahead. I'll make that motion, okay. Judge. Second. All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now we have some new hires at Park and Rec here, building monitors at 7.40 an hour, effective uh, this week. Uh, Peyton Wee, John Sabeck, and Lillian Noderer. And uh, also uh, lifeguard Kimberly Jasinski at uh, 8.59 an hour, who was uh, initially left off an earlier uh, season hire list. Motion to accept the new hires at Parks and Rec. Okay. All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. All right, now we're down to the uh, second public comment of the uh, afternoon. Uh, anybody come in who wanted to address the fiscal court since we began that uh, hasn't uh, done so earlier? Earlier today, I did mention the Purple Heart, and I see uh, Albert Harrison here today who brought that to my attention that uh, today is Purple Heart Day, uh, August 7th. So thank you for that. All right, if there is uh, no other, if there's no one for public comment, I'd like a motion to go into executive session uh, to uh, pursuant to KRS 61.810F, discussion which might lead to the employment of an uh, appointment of an employee. So moved. Second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Motions were temporarily adjourned.